Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Drone Tech Stumbles Around in the Dark Blindly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, yeah, folks, tonight we're going to do a little chat, debate, uh, depends on how you look at it, about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And if you've been following this at all in the news, then you, or I should say, if you've been following it on X uh, slash Twitter, then you have seen a lot of recent uh, stories about uh, companies like Delta Airlines putting, you know, wokeism and, and racial quotas above the safety of their passengers, uh, quite literally. And uh, along with some other companies, not just them, uh, some, pretty much all of them at this point are buying into this, what is a far left Marxist, socialist, uh, communist, you know, however you want to say it, based uh, system. And somehow it's now in all of our institutions. Uh, there, There's a video. I'm going to see if I can pull it up here. Uh, let me see. Before I introduce our, our crew here, let me see if I can find this very quickly. Oh, geez. Of course I lost it. Uh, I'll pull it up here during our discussion, but I'm going to go ahead and pull these guys in. That's scary. Hey, everybody, hello. Uh, you're live on the air right now. Uh, I've just told everybody what we're going to talk about. I've let them know it could get spicy, a little trigger warning. And uh, I'll go no, ahead and... Uh, <laughs> well, we have we have some special guests here. And everybody, I, I know you're all here. I, I really would like if you had your camera on. I mean, if you have one, you should have it on if you're in this, I think. I'm, we're, we're probably going to start enforcing that here soon. But uh, right now, at least we have some debate opponents. So I'll, I'll go ahead and let it go. Uh, Forcing webcams talk... is part of our DEI program. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, or as I like to call it, uh, less or no white people, um, exclusion of white people. And uh, inequality of white people, like it, the whole thing is seems geared towards essentially uh, discriminating against white people uh, to in order to prop up other groups. And I don't think that's the way to go about it. And uh, we'll we'll see what everyone else thinks. But just let's do a quick introduction of everyone. We'll start with RW and then just go down the list. Hi, I'm RW. I'm part of the Discord server and. Uh... I enjoy being here for group cohesion and talking about uh, whatever's happening in the world and figuring out different people's worldviews. <clears throat> Word up, man. Me too. Uh, Atlas. Yeah, um, Atlas is somebody who has uh, banned from the server recently uh, for, uh, we'll say, twice. Du dubious reasons. Yeah, twice for, man. I would say, dubious reasons. Because I, I, I want opposition in here and. Uh, we had a little conflict on that, but I think that's over. Uh, we've got Atlas back. It should be interesting. Welcome, Atlas. Thanks. Thank you for being accommodating, too. Um, I'm going to step away once I get this introduction uh, to see if I can accommodate your camera rule. So. Okay, cool. Um, that was, my, that was my introduction. Okay, cool. Now is your introduction. So, wait. So, oh, that was Atlas, you, okay. you are pro DEI? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll say I'm pro. We'll say I'm pro. <laughs> okay. If, if you're con, I'll say I'm pro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Be right back. Uh, Forg. You want to throw your throw your hat into the ring, Forg? Forg, I know that you have your own uh, things going on. You want to talk about that at all here before we start? Um, and what your position is? I I don't really know what the things that are going on are, honestly. But my, my position is I am very much against it, and I don't think it's anti-white. I think it's anti-white and also anti-Asian. Um, I can bring up some stories here. I, I wish we still had. I should have done this. I, I was right up against the wall to, to get on at 8 o'clock. So uh, I'm going to sift through and find all the stories here. But we have Delta Airlines. There's a lot of examples. Uh, the CEO of Delta Airlines, I believe, said... Uh, He's one. He, his name's Scott Kirby. He's a drag queen, very. Uh, which hey, you can be a drag queen if you want. I don't care about. But it's weird that like 
these people who happen to be drag queens are all of a sudden like getting in these high positions and it's and paired up with kids like what's that what's up with that um but so you got dei or you got um you got delta you got um ah man who, who is it uh cbs uh of uh a bunch of stuff came out about CBS. Uh, we have um, New Mexico State University, who they just got called out because they're having these AI special AI programs for engineering students. But it's basically for everybody, literally except for straight white men. You can't get into it. And the excuse that they're using is that it's because the field of AI has been historically underrepresented. Now. Just let me pose the question to all of you out there right now. What's the problem with that excuse? And they sorry, say that the field of AI is underrepresented? Historically underrepresented. So that's why they have to exclude white men who are straight. I mean, uh, I mean, the problem would be that historical historically is not a very long period of time. Exactly. It's just it's an, <laughs> it's, it's an exaggeration. It's an exaggeration in a sentence. Yeah. I mean, well, it's just they're just saying the words that they know they need to say to justify what they're doing. There's also um, some of the stuff I was looking at today uh, that's happening currently is the state of Florida is 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 basically getting rid of DEI. Um, I have an article brought up uh, from the left basically stating that. DEI, this is quoting, DEI has become a popular boogeyman for Republicans as they aim to turn academic institution into places of censorship and conservative ideology. So that's kind of an extreme rebuttal against people that are not interested in what they're seeing because, you know, it's related to the debate topic. It is in violation of civil rights. So it's 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 one of these topics that's definitely taken to extremes on both sides but what's interesting to me is that when you look at the court cases that are happening the court cases are ruling in favor of that it is a violation of civil rights and awarding it to the person bringing the case to the court all right so we have that from rw uh basically uh laying it down right there what do you think about that oh we got some new people too apparently um who is that? I can't. I can't read that name. For the incarnation, name. Texan D. Incarnation. Okay. Fellows. And do we got Atlas yeah. back yet? Does anybody uh, want to chime in? I'm here. Um, logging on. I'm with my camera. In just a second. Incarnation uh, and Texan D. You're welcome to mic in at any time and just say if you want to do intro or not. State who you are. State uh, if you believe that DEI is a violation of civil rights or not. It'd be interesting to see which side you've taken or if you've even taken one. Yeah, and I, I'd also like to ask, has anybody seen the exchange between uh, Mark Cuban, uh, Elon Musk, and some other people about DEI? I've Mark seen that Cu Cuban's name all over X at the moment, but I didn't. Yeah, is, Mark, is Mark Cuban the guy from Shark Tank? Is he from Shark uh, Tank? I'm, no, it, the guy from Shark Tank is Mr. Wonderful. Is that who you're talking about? Uh, I don't know. I just Mark know Cuban his face. From Shark Tank. I'm not no, sure. Mark Cuban is a guy. Mark Cuban is a guy who owns, a, owns basketball a basketball team. team. Yeah, yeah, but he was on. Looks like he's a guy on Shark Tank. Oh he yeah, he looks Shark like Tank it. And he owns the Mavericks. That's Mark Cuban. He was on Shark Tank and he owns the Mavericks. That's Mark Cuban. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, he he's a big proponent of DEI, and uh, he got called out, and he he gave a real. Uh, is anybody interested in seeing? I can I can. Uh, here. Yeah, I've heard his reply, but you're more than welcome to post it. Uh, one yeah, second, if it, I'll show if you. It, if it backs your, if it backs. Yeah, I feel like this is like it's a great exchange because it really kind of highlights the issue here. Because um, let's see here, Elon Musk. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, so Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, DEI. Okay, here we go. Here we go. What? So, and I'm sharing. You guys can see my screen if you uh, click on that thing. But uh, 
So I'll just read the article. An explosive turn of events on social media. Tesla CEO Elon Musk publicly shamed Shark Tank star Mark Cuban. There you go. I didn't realize he was there you on go, there. Ford. Over his job, views buddy. on DEI in the workforce. The debate was ignited by a post from billionaire hedge fund manager Bill Ack- Ackerman, or Ackman on X, which lambasted Harvard's DEI policies. Uh, Musk, so Cuban, who recently sold uh, a majority interest in Dallas Mavericks, but retained operational control of the team, count which is interesting uh, if you just think about that, countered Musk's viewpoint with a series of tweets emphasizing the advantages of DEI programs. Good businesses look uh, where others don't to find employees that will put your business in the best possible position to succeed, Cuban said. Let me see if this is actual. Oh, here we go. I want the actual Twitter. We live in a country with very diverse demographics. In this era, we must trust a business can be hard to come that uh, business can be hard to come by. People tend to connect more easily to people who are like them. Hmm, interesting. Having a workforce that is diverse and representative of your stakeholders is good for business. And Elon, he's responding to Elon Musk, who said discrimination on the basis of race, which DEI does, is literally the definition of racism. And so then Mark Cuban goes into equity. (laughs) Treating people equally does not mean treating them the same. Yes, that's a very deep thought. Okay. (laughs) I made the mistake for a lot of years thinking everyone's like, yeah, exactly. It's like equity is a core principle of business. What? Like, and that might be for business, but like when we're talking about like the difference between equality and equity, there's a big one. And I pointed out before that, like, you know, not even, um, um, what's his face? Uh, God, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. He's been out of the news so long. Uh, who's the socialist? Uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. God, uh, Bernie Sanders even choose, and he was asked about equity versus equality. First of all, he at first didn't really know what equity was. And then he had to kind of be reminded. He's like, oh yes, yes. Okay. And he's like, oh yeah, equality is better. I choose equality over equity. So it's like right. so these people quickly the so, definition of equity, uh, the state or quality of being just and fair. So that's the difference between equity and equality. Right. Which that's all very subjective, first of all. Right. All those things. And it's a communist principle. This is like communist. This is a communist kind of way of thinking. And it's kind of weird that it's suddenly like all over the place, along with all this other sort of Marxist inspired stuff. But um he goes on, put your poison in, blah, 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 blah. And he goes hey, on, hey, on like buddy, this. Real quick, the tweet, I don't think it's visible on YouTube, man. They, they, they stripped it? Well, Last Dance is pointing that out in the chat, and it's not visible. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm looking at YouTube right now. It's a big blank screen with us at the wow. bottom. Oh, because I have to, like, be on it. Oh, that's so annoying. Who would have? Yeah, who would have? I can't uh, like scroll that. through it. So, so I got to do it this way, where nobody, like, only the people watching can see. Sorry about that, everybody. I forgot about that. I wonder if there's that's a setting I can change in Discord, so that when I'm not on the screen, it keeps it keeps streaming anyway. Hmm. Atlas has arrived on camera. Thank you, brother. Yeah, made it a policy. Well, now yeah. we can. Okay. Hold on, I want to um, I want to read some of these replies to uh, Mark yeah, Cuban. Well, now it's up on on YouTube. Cool. Right, it's because I I just moved it over. I just moved the window okay. over instead of stream. Because when I'm like scrolling, I can do that like for videos where I just leave it playing. But when I'm scrolling, I can't do it that way. I guess. Um, so the one of the ironic things about that, right, is that the Mavericks aren't racially diverse, are they? No, they're not. And he and you know people pointed that out to him, and he just kind of blew it off like, eh. oh, I find the best people for the job. It's like you don't understand what DEI even is, dude. Like he doesn't even these these people support DEI. That that's what I'm getting to here is that these people support DEI. They don't even know what it is. They don't understand what it is. So dude, like the- we're here where Elon Musk says the airline industry can't find enough qualified pilots even without insane DEI requirements. And then Cuban comes back. This is a training school. Once they graduate, it's a multi-year process to have an opportunity to pilot for United. Since I'm a nice guy and I want to be fully informed. Hold on. I had to open a different window here. I'll share with you the benefit of the six seconds I spent. Look for new program work. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then. 
So here we go. So Cuban's whole thing is that DEI does not uh, under, uh, undermine mediocrity meritocracy <clears throat> there are many examples like the attached that indicate the statement that that statement is incorrect dei is not worth defending let's work together to pursue pursue colorblind mediocrity instead uh meritocracy <laughs> i keep saying that um so it's medical school acceptance rates i want you guys to see this damn it everybody can't see it at the same time let me see if i can just put the link so you guys can see it There you go. That's the that's what I'm looking at. So that's medical school acceptance rates by MCAT score, GPA, and race ethnicity. So, <laughs> okay. So this is like, I guess the percentage of per race and like the the complaints that they get physicians with complaints and there's 28 percent european 43 percent african 36 percent latin 24 percent asian and i think they're saying that and then if you look at the actual acceptance rates black are the highest acceptance rates despite is this pre or post affirmative action this is 2013 to 16, this data. Okay. And then it's physicians disciplined, European 1%. And this is separate stats, which I, I believe he put the link to here. He did. And um, African 1.5% disciplined, Latin 1.9%, and 0.8 Asian. So they're saying that like, there's way more disciplined you know, black and Latin, African and Latin and then physicians with investigations 6.7 to 11 so yeah and all the so basically there's higher acceptance rates for these uh, groups but then you look and then it seems like they're doing a worse job so I'm not sure Based on what I've been experiencing on the web, going through and seeing active court cases that are happening, it seems like or you can go back to the example of of I don't I don't even want to say their names because it's gonna it's gonna make people go into the weeds. But you have had a period of time where DEI seems like it was being used to push out a certain um, demographic That's and right. allow other people to take those job positions by stopping them from getting the chance. But based on court cases that are happening now, that are still in litigation even, companies are seeing that the Supreme Court being on a 6-3 lean towards conservatives, they're losing the court cases. So they're now trying to regroup and figure out how DEI can be actually what DEI is meant to be. Because it's the argument that I would believe would come from people that are for DEI is that it's meant to actually create an equal workplace. But the issues that are happening are examples of how it's be it's a bastardized form of what it says it is. Um, but it, it's I don't know. Any thoughts? So so yeah, you looked into it and you you found that what's happening. So clearly DEI. Does anybody? Let's just get this on the table. Does anybody disagree that DEI DEI by its very existence it has to discriminate racially against white people and Asians? No, not not specifically white people. I would I would say a majority of whatever whatever population is the majority at the time is it, it would discriminate against whatever the so like in China it would probably just discriminate against like Han Chinese and in America they would discriminate for white people. That'd be the pattern. Whatever the majority is. So yeah. you think okay, so you think if let's go, you know, fifty years, seventy five, a hundred years down the road, and now, you know, it's mostly it's a majority Hispanic. You think. That the, that suddenly they would not that it wouldn't apply to them. I don't. It's not going to be a hundred uh, years. However uh, long it'll take for Hispanics to become at, majority. at some point, yeah. At some point, it, the the data would change to whoever the majority is at the time. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with I would agree with Atlas in that you know DEI in its full in its current form, I would say is approaching discrimination. I wouldn't necessarily call it outright discrimination, but it's approaching there. But it's 
the concept and the science behind DEI isn't necessarily that faulty. And in that majority popu in, in majority populations, you'll notice a trend to favor the majority population over the minority population, despite meritocracy being a thing. So DEI tries to avoid that. It does an awful job at it. But DEI in, in its nature is trying to avoid that very nature where you have a, a, a majority population being favored for reasons that aren't meritocracy. Okay. What do you mean by favored? There will always, there will more, always more be... Benefits. Yeah, there will always be some form of tribalism in human nature. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing. So if you have a majority population, say that's all white... There will be a natural sentiment to be biased towards white people. Okay, Whether what does that look simple, like? What does that look like? It could be as simple as not being exposed to people of other cultures. So you have a natural, okay. a natural, a natural, I don't want to say negative, but you have a natural uh, anxiety, if you want to put it to her, to somebody or people who don't know and who are different than you. That is a natural and normal human uh, uh, emotion and thing to do. So what is if something... you want... Hmm? Sorry, go ahead. Let, let, no, me no, go ahead. In, let me put it in four terms. All right, you have a business, you're a white guy, and someone rocks up for the job and he's straight gangster, and you have a bias towards him. And if you know, if you if you don't let meritocracy or the person's ability to do the job to outweigh whatever culture he's from, then you're doing it wrong. If you, yes. I, mean, I don't know if I answered that correctly, but there you go. Yeah, no, I would agree. I would agree with that. That that sentiment. Now, I also think, you know, from a society that the the, the thug has a responsibility to make himself more approachable. You know what I mean? But that that's 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 you know a little bit further down the rabbit hole. But but on a surface level, um, and these sort of ideas, these sort of societal uh, structures are normal. They happen everywhere in the world, and they do exist. And this is sort of where the idea of DEI may have taken foothold, even though its current application is is less than adequate. Less than so adequate. DEI. Very, 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 very DEI. Well What's that? That was very DEI. Well worded. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't hear. Go ahead, Ford. There. Oh. You said it was. Uh -huh. It's very well worded. You very well worded. Is that what you said, DW? Yeah, you, it was very Forwarded. politically worded. In other words, the way that you said it, it's like, in other words, in my bias, I'm looking at it like, damn, they're really failing right now at, at doing the right thing and being good to people. And you're just saying it's it's inadequate. Not so. Yeah, it's a, it's inadequate in its application because I don't think that government should be forcing these level of policies. I think I, I do agree with, with Mark Cuban that it is good business for a company, right? On, without government you know, implications in, and this is how it should be done, that companies do look at this sort of sort of thing that we see in societies and that they do find ways to recruit people of minority groups. I think companies have a responsibility to do that. It's wait, good business. Wait, it's, if it's good business, then why don't the Mavericks do it? The Mavericks do do it. I mean, there's white no, people who, who who play. Yeah, they do. There's no, they white don't. people who play on. Yes, they do. There's white people who play on who play on on the, uh, the Mavericks. But what we're we're not going to compare there's different, disproportionately. Wait, wait, where's the we're Asians? Not gonna, we're, stop. We're not going to compare <laughs> right? a professional sport, right? A professional sport which employs quite oh, wait, quite different. really not that many people. Yes, it is wait, different so, because so not when you say pro, hold on, stop. When you say professional sport, when you say professional yes. sport, what does that mean? Well, that what is the that mean to be a, What does that mean that to is, be a professional that is, sport? That is, the, that is the classification of the career that these people have chosen. No, no, However, but what makes a, career, pro, no, no, what makes a sport a, a pro sport? Can you tell me what that is? Um, well, you are paid to do the job. No, 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 no. But something makes it pro, professional, right? Yeah, so you're being, you're being it's the paid. the cream of the crop. You're being, it's the top. No, no, that's not. No, that's not true. Uh, you're I being paid. Really? No, that's not. What do you because mean you that's can be, not you true? Can, you, can be, <laughs> you can be a professional <laughs> football. You can be a professional football Not just football anybody can go apply and be in the Mavericks. You're missing the point of what I'm trying to say. The word professional no. right, in the sports means that you are getting paid to do a job. Well, you're being incorrect. paid to play that sport. So you can be a professional a professional basketball player. And therefore, they have player, to hire the best play players and be, so they can finish. win. Let me finish here. Is a, is a is a basketball player in B League a professional? Yes. Great. Well, they're B League, but that's my you're right. making, you're making my point right now. 
Right, right. right. So, so but my point is, is you you're don't making have to my point that, that there's two separate leagues because there's two different levels of of skill, right? But they're still professional. And one the, gets the, paid the person more. In the, person in the B league is still playing professional basketball. Right, right. But my point, the right. point is, is that they're going to put the best per, like especially when we're talking about the Mavericks, they're going to put the best person for the job. It doesn't matter about skin color. That like makes no difference at all. Diversity makes no difference. Right. At all. And I'm not going to use That's why the sports. NBA using sports, is mostly black. Using sports is a stupid analogy, right? Using sports is a stupid it's analogy. Not. It's not. It's a perfect diversity. analogy. Absolutely. It is. It's no, actually it's a, a stupid analogy. analogy. It's a stupid analogy because you're looking, first of all, you're looking at a very, 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 very tiny very subset flat. of the population, very, very tiny subset of the population. So it doesn't reflect the overall population in a very worthwhile manner. Well, I'm not manner. talking about but you're missing the point. That that's not the point. No, the I'm point gonna... the point no, the point is that what that what that that team, they want to be the best, they want to do the best, and diversity we the, the saying is that diversity is our strength. Diversity is not a strength when you're trying to be the best. Is it? Yes, it is. All right. What are you talking about? So uh, I think you're conflating, you know, two things. One, we're, we're talking about societal. We're so why is the about, NBA yes, mostly black? Just, yes, it, because we're on okay, You got to give them a the chance professional... to answer. Yeah. Okay, do you know how many professional basketball players there are? I get that. No, I get that. Right, I, no, no. I, no I answer understand. your question. How many? But, no, stop. Answer my question. That's Please missing the point. To me, that's missing the point. Let that's me, not the point I'm making. Point. How many professional basketball players are currently employed? Oh, it's a. Oh, it's a tiny percentage of the population. Really? Maybe a obviously. thousand, right? Maybe a thousand. So, how many Americans are currently employed? Hundreds of millions. So, if you're right. going to make a worthwhile comparison, make a worthwhile comparison. Comparing a professional sports team to a corporate structure okay. is completely. Well, no, 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 wait, that, no, no, stop. Let me respond. Right. I have a response. Could, I have a response. I have a response. Could I, I'll so, respond after you, John Tech. All right, after me. I'll, I'll make it quick. So, each corporation, each company is a very specific. Right. Set of like they're looking for very specific people for a very specific job and the people they put in like they're looking for they're trying to do the best and be the best to make the most money. And so if you're going to put people in a position that they're not necessarily qualified for, not the best to do that position, but you're doing it to meet a racial quota, then you're not going to have you're not going to have the best outcome. Just like I was showing right, in that I'm just I was showing in that uh, the data about the, the doctors. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'd and, like and to say is, real, real quick, please, our incarnation, or do you want to respond real quick? Okay, he muted. I, okay, I guess I'll just respond. They may be a small amount of the population, but they have a hundred times the influence, thousands of times the influence than a normal person does. So a, a very, very common argument against the left is, oh, what, what about, you know, these little black girls that want to uh, go into this profession and they don't have anyone to look up to? What about a little Asian boy who is watching the NBA with his dad and he doesn't see an Asian man playing for him? They, they have so much more influence than the, the more, than the normal person does. So the fact that they're a small amount of the population, it, it doesn't really mean much. Look, right, right. If, and, if and my point was let me I can I just can I just answer real yeah. quick to this what yeah. he just said? Yeah, go if for it. any parent is telling their kid of any race that they have any shot of playing any professional sports, they are being disingenuous, irrespective of race. Saying you can make it in the NBA to your kid is fallacious. Same but thing with telling your kid they can be a mermaid. So, so I mean, <laughs> that, so saying that, saying that you're going to promote more basketball by forcing an Asian kid to play professional basketball, and then you're going to tell an Asian kid, right? Hey, look, there's an Asian playing in basket in professional basketball. You too can be a professional basketball player. You're being disingenuous to your kids. Like, what about telling a little like, black girl she can become a mermaid? Okay, let me let me ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> Diversity hire is not done in, in the NFL. And I mean, you're saying it's a different category, but it's still a corporation. So, Wait, it so still, on the corporate side of the NFL, on the corporate side of the NFL, there's definitely diversity hires. A hundred percent. I agree. The I agree. Stadiums, on, the stadiums on the office filled side. with diversity hires, all, all, all of the all of the places that surround a football team where most of the people are yes, employed. You are correct. I'm agreeing players. with you. But when it's on the field, there's definitely a point that's made in the fact that they're not willing to diversity hire for their team because they will lose. People who are on exactly. TV who have hundreds point. of That's thousands of point. viewers, and you can you can you can extrapolate or you can spread but that out to like companies. Why do we care about professional athletes? You're you're talking about just, literally okay. thousand people. It's not athletes. Let's say it's airline people. pilots. Let's say it doesn't it's matter if it's pilots. a thousand people. Great. Let's say it's airline. No, it does pilots. matter. 
No, it doesn't. Okay, what about airlines? Yes, no, it, it doesn't. When they have such a big influence. No, it does not. No, no it does it, not. It, it really does matter because it's a it tiny doesn't when there are millions of people population. watching them. It there are millions of people matter. watching them, dude. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Working in the NBA, they're not going to work in the NBA. It doesn't matter how much influence they have in terms of a workforce. They can influence kids to play the sport, but they're not going to influence them to become professional basketball players. That is nonsense. It's same thing with the mermaid. Same thing with the mermaid. Same thing with the mermaid. Like, I don't understand why your right, justification so is a mermaid isn't a profession. Playing. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about like a fantasy character. Right. So, like, so, so the difference here. Yeah, exactly. So, so why make them black or white? They're a fantasy character. Yet the left push for a black mermaid or, you know, a completely black watching a character. Guys, 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 get off of Twitter. Get off of problem. Like, get off of Twitter, get off of YouTube. It's not a real reflection of the real world, guys. Right, yes, this is here's not a real reflection. reflection. Here's a real online. reflection. It's the same thing with DEI look, schools. Look. Guy, let's, your mic okay, is guys, quiet for a second. Hey, uh, this is a real, this is in real life. This is Delta Airlines. They put out a document to their employees, uh, which included um, the style notes, okay, for when they're writing. This is for, the, you know, I assume people doing advertisements and things like that any sort of like journalism for delta they capitalize black and brown but lowercase white that that's just mm -hmm. weird to me like this it's so i agree earlier Listen, earlier you, agree. you were saying that this I is agree. more about like uh you're that's not about race it's just about the majority this seems oddly like specific yeah. and directed well because if you look at societies so if i a white guy were to go into china right i would be the minority so how I would be treated would be affected by the majority population. This will apply. This this exact thing that I just said here will apply to any society in which China there is and a America majority are not the same population. thing. Okay, so, China, so Chinese, Chinese, matter, pe guys. Chinese people are taught from birth Dude, to hate Westerners. They are taught from birth matter. to hate Westerners. Point, yes, it point. does when you're comparing the two. Yes, it does when you're comparing the two. Your only argument is it doesn't matter because they are different. Like uh, that's what a comparison is. You're comparing two different things. Org. We're talking about companies in two countries that would be using the same DEI platform. Right. And Lu uh, Lu what's your name? Not Lucifer. Uh, I understand that. Whatever you're up. Uh, you're, you're saying that like, so you're not saying Lucifer. that if Hispanic, you're saying that once Hispanic people become the majority in America, then it'll be white people getting those jobs. But here's my thing is that it, maybe things will change between that when that happens. Maybe things will evolve and change and get better. But at, it, let's say it happened right now. Right now. I think that everything would stay the same and they'd say, oh, yes, but historical uh, inequalities, historical inequalities. I, 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 They'll say that for another 100 years that's, that's, and that's use an it argument. to that's, discriminate against whites. That's a non sequitur. That's a non sequitur. And you can't really well, that, use this in a debate. It's, it's really a non sequitur. It's, it's, it's not a worthy line but of They argument. do use that line of reasoning now. They used it with the AI Great. thing. The, no, look, the, uh, uh, the New York, New Mexico University said that they were excluding straight white men because of the historic inequalities in AI. For the AI program, when AI has only been like a, a thing for how many years? So if they're using that now, and that's a perfect example of what I was just saying, they they are they're they're proving me right. So prove me wrong. Show me an show me an example where somehow that worked. Well, I mean it wouldn't now because we're the majority, so you probably can't. But you know that kind of proves my point. I, but like I said, things might change between now and then. Maybe the woke will stop being racist. I. I think we're getting off into the weeds. I think we need to back it up to like what's happening right now and not probabilities or future occurrences. Well, that is um, happening like right now. That is something that's happening right now. When we when you were using the example when you were using the example of uh, the airlines, do you know in that example how much it's affecting the industry or if they're or if they're creating risk by hiring people of less merit for the job? Yeah, so of yeah, I'll have to find it here, uh, but apparently there's a lot of, like, uh, pilots, boomer pilots that are getting too old to fly, and they're they're basically being saddled with these uh, diversity hires that are not, they're not passing their tests, they're failing, and yet they're still going on, and they're being paired up with these pilots, and these pilots are like, once we quit, once all these white men quit, y'all are going to just be with these folks who all failed their tests, and yet are, we're allowed to go anyway for diversity. I'll Definitely try it. and drop that source. Yeah. Uh, also, welcome to Ava or Vara or what? I'm not gonna say her whole name. So, what do you what do you call yourself? Thanks. 
Uh, I don't know. I have a look at Svara. It doesn't matter. That's just a random name for this. I got banned on my other account for uh, gore and shocking content. Well, thanks for not posting that in the server. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, that's um, not what I posted. That says something about Jews, and they don't like that. So, oh, uh, right. here we go. Gotcha. I'll, I'll tell you hard, just a quick reference, yeah. but you you want to weigh in at all on on the I topic? I can play of the video for everybody. If yeah, I being a violation it. of civil rights or not? Do you have any thoughts on that either direction? Yeah, I think that I think that it is, and if we, you know, really dial back, peel back what's going on, and look under the covers. There's definitely some subversion going on because, you know, look who look who invented airlines, look who um, invented power and the Internet, and look who didn't, you know, and look at the countries where blacks have kicked the white people out or look at countries where blacks don't want white people in there or, or other races, you know, and uh, they're they're shitholes. And I mean, I like Mexico. We used to go there as kids, but. You know, it's a it's it's a third world country pretty much, and, and you know, look at India, and you've got these people getting these jobs and come into our country and trying to wash us out, and that's the goal is to get rid of white people because we have influence, and we usually stand up to people that want to come in and subvert our country. You know, look at how many times certain groups of people have been kicked out or asked to leave. You know, look at Scandinavian countries that have majority white population, their crime rate is extremely low. And now you've got them flooding the countries with Middle Eastern immigrants, black immigrants, and the crime rate is soaring. I mean, this is this is by design. You know, it's subversion. And why? You know, I don't know. We stand up for ourselves. We fight wars. They want to take our guns. They want to take our influence. You know, how would you go in and take over a country? You would wash out the people that would stand up and say no. But to, uh, so, back to the original subject, DEI no, is part of that subversion. So I, real quick, let me just show this real quick to the uh, audience. And you guys, if you want to see it, if you join my screen share, you can see it. But this is the CEO of uh, Delta. And this what. This is one of the things that was raising concerns because he seems more concerned. First of all, he's like a very outspoken drag queen. And it's like, that's like why it's just weird thing to put forward. I don't know. It's weird to me, but um, it's such a focus on skin hiring. I'm fine with pilots of any color. I don't care. But like just the idea that there are people of, of color that are getting the job just because of that. Is the fact I don't that like it's not anyway. a skill issue, it's a race issue, is is alarming. That's the problem. The volume's really low. I'll, I'll revisit your oh, point, then, Var, that you made. Uh, one second. Yours are wrong, of course. Here we go. You know, everybody <laughs> talks about Nazis burning books in the How 30s and 40s, but they don't tell you what books they burned. Working into the Aviator Academy? We have committed that 50% of the class of, of the classes will be women or people of color. Uh, today, only 19% of our pilots at United Airlines are women or people of color. And by the way, from all the data I've seen, that's the highest of any airline in the country. White males don't just dominate in the cockpits, also in the C-suite at United Airlines. Well, look, at United, I'm proud of the diversity that we actually have in our, our C-suite. I think if you look around corporate America. Correct me if I'm saying though, so I, this is just based off your website, people you list as executives, but out of 11 people, three are women. I believe one is a person of color. Um, that's correct. Um, but, you know, in corporate America, I think, you know. Dude, that's a low bar. How do you yeah. raise your own bar? Well, a lot of this is, you know, focusing on it. We have uh, Why is programs. Why a low bar? To, like, one of the white things people we do is for every job when we do an interview, we require women and people of color to be involved in, in the interview process, bringing people in early in their careers um, as well uh, and giving them those opportunities uh, and creating a... Yeah, whatever. <sighs> individual don't even get the opportunity to innovate, it seems. That's, that's my, you know, assumption. So um, I just played that video real quick uh, for the audience, and he basically was saying, right now only 19% of pilots are people of color or diverse or whatever, and that all the rest are white males, and they're like, oh, what are you going to do to get that down lower? Like, what? Like, it's a situation where being white becomes a detriment to you. Like, whites become Why undesirable. are we in a rush to do it? 
why, isn't why that overrepresented? Right? I think blacks make up a smaller percent of the American population. They do. They make up a small percent, but they also make up the largest percent of the crime. All right, let's not get, get into that. that. Let's not get into that. That's that's the whole thing. <laughs> Atlas, Atlas, what do you so, what do you so think? I'd over like there, to man? bring up. So I'd like to bring up a or Atlas if he wants to go, but I'd like to bring up a very good exa example of failing DEI. But Atlas, if you want to go first, uh, by please do. I got an example too, but you'll go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I've talked more than you have. I'd rather hear you, to be honest. That's fine. I was going to bring up the Scully effect, if those are aware of what that is. Uh, but then this weirdo tried to go on about Nazis, and that drove me nuts. Uh, who's, who's seen X-Files? Anyone seen X-Files? Yeah. Nope. X-Files? Love it. Yeah, you've seen X-Files, right? Of course. You ever heard of the Scully? The... <laughs> you ever heard of the Scully saying... effect? No, I haven't. You've not. I don't think so. Why don't you Google it? I mean, you're Googling everything else. Why don't you Google I'm it? About, I'm Why don't about you to. show the class? Scully effect. Here you go. The Scully effect. Son, so welcome, brother. It. brother. It's gone. So um, it's um. Women who regularly watch X Files are significantly more likely to have considered going into STEM career, majored in STEM field college, and worked in STEM profession. How is this not a negative benefit to, or how is this, how is this, a, how is this not a benefit to society by highlighting a woman in oh. a STEM field? Where she, it's not necessarily a combat role that she does, right? She's in the lab. Well, she's investigating. Things, right. Right. Well, I, I'm not against that at all. I think that's great, actually. And I would say. Well, no, but the problem, the problem that we're having here, and, I, and this is my biggest issue, is that we, I really want to ask, how would you feel about a sign, like a donut shop, right? That said out front, that said like, blacks need not apply. Or that said, uh, or the well, Irish wrong, name. Obviously. How would you feel with it? Well, that why is that wrong? wrong? Because that's what you're because that because now we're selecting for race, right? But I'm only picking a historical example that people have already done, right? Like this, this the problem isn't de dei. The problem is how is it applied, right? And when we originally talked about this, we talked about how it breaks up the predominant. Uh, it breaks things up from getting stagnant. Even when I joined this channel, right? You guys jokingly talked about how you guys needed more diverse. Uh, uh, combatants in here to keep things from going stale. Okay, I wasn't like, joking. How, how is the how is the Scully effect an example of DEI? And in fact, I would say that the Scully effect actually, real quick, I just want to throw this in there. That like X Files, anti DEI. <laughs> right. I, I would say that like that actually proves there was a time before before the woke uh, supremacist movement where women were role model, were in stuff and were role models and like were. No, but uh, before she was in, it was not right. There, it there was, wasn't ham fisted. Go on reading the article. It talks about it talks about the increase in both uh, the FBI and other STEM fields, right? Specifically right, right. the FBI. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, I don't sure. see how that's DEI though. Like, yeah, I don't. That's I don't great. either. But I, I don't see how that's I see DEI. Where you, I see where you're getting at. But so, yeah, yeah. So John Jack, you had, you said something here, right? You said something, and I will. I want to point on it. It wasn't ham fisted in, and I 100% agree with you, right? I 100% agree with you. The way DEI is applied is very ham fisted. It's very down your throat, and it's very rewarding for things that shouldn't be rewarded. I agree with you. The only, uh, the only the only the only thing I will say on that, right, is on that standpoint, we as a society, however, do I don't want to say responsibility, but it's in our best interest to recognize that there are talents in minority populations that likely, right, based on fairly accurate statistics, get less opportunities by the mere fact that they are a minority population. They will be biased towards the That's majority population. That's not true. Yes, it is true. Can I, yes, could yes, I give I an mean, example? Could I give an example real quick? Could I give one example? Asians are a minority quick. population and per capita they get accepted into colleges more. Whites get accepted less That's than true. Asians in colleges, yet they're a minority population. Real quick, I want to yeah, welcome Son Nassau and uh, 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 regular debater. Average. Tyler, Tyler, no. Sorry. <laughs> Just call me Tyler, dude. It's fine. Tyler. Yeah. A lot of okay, people so hear this. this is... Oh, What's yeah, up, go ahead. What's up, Sonosol? Good to see you. No, I just want to say hey. Yeah, no, okay. So, like, I think a better example, this is something that I was just going over with my chat, um, because I was looking into DEI, because I've heard very vague things, both positive and negative about it, right? And that seems to be the overwhelming majority of the information out there on DEI is that there, it's very very vague as to what it is and what it's seeking exactly. to accomplish and through what means uh, uh, 
I this appreciate is, this you is... going over the uh, content or the to- or the content with your chat, buddy. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so here here's an example that I know of off the top of my head that why like DEI might be a good idea, right? Like making sure that there is some level of diversity in a workplace. Um, I believe it was either Canon or Kodak. It was some camera company. I believe this happened in the early 2000s, right? Um, and I think that there was even a uh, business psychology uh, theory put out about this. I can't remember the name of it. I apologize. But essentially, this is what happened. They had a camera that had uh, facial recognition software so that it would focus on uh, the face no matter how far or close it was to the camera, right? And right before it goes to market, um, they realize, holy shit, this camera doesn't recognize black people faces, right? This camera has been in development for, you know, like five years. We've put all of this work into the algorithms that recognize the faces, but it doesn't recognize black people. Why the fuck did this happen? And no they one realized the <laughs> yes, they realized that the, the team was testing the, the software on pictures of their family or using the cameras on their family. Right? But they were almost all white or Asian workers at this office. So, because they lacked that bit of diversity in their uh, in their workplace, they actually had like lost a fuckload of money because it was right before it was supposed to go to market. Um, an, they lost a, f- yeah. Go ahead. It's unsolved. There, it's an interesting example because it's a very physical example of diversity. Like it was literally the color of his skin and nothing to do with his abilities or <laughs> his cultural experiences and stuff like that. Well, you know what right. I mean? Like I understand but your point, something... but it's just such an interesting point. Right. And I can and like I can agree with you that like this goes against like the the part of DEI that I would like to see actually happen, which would be the, um, you know, merit based things. And then like after that, however the fuck things happen, I was just trying to like look through or find some like specific details about a DEI program. It doesn't seem like there are any specific details about any of these things you like have to either uh, once you dig uh, you'll find well, it but it's a the big programs the programs are almost always like linked to you know like um, uh, uh ibrahim x kendi and uh that that woman who wrote white fragility and all those people Rob, it's, Robert it's all like critical race theory stuff and I, yeah, Robert and I'd, also, I'd also like i'd also like to add right that i i'm a, i'm i'm at least for me where i live right there is a tax base incentive to diversity hire. And and for me, it could be a market-based incentive to diversity hire, much like much like uh, uh, San, San, Sansol, Sansol pointed out, right? There is there is a market value here for a company to be diverse. I don't like it, however, when the government comes in and says, hey, we'll give you a tax break if, if you have so many minorities on your staff, because that's where it starts to break down, because now they're not hiring for uh, I mean, they're hiring for profit, sure, but they're not hiring for market profit. They're hiring for tax breaks, and they'll hire anybody, and then it doesn't become a meritocracy anymore. It's using could money I, to push. It's can I jump in and make? I'm yeah. a little late, late to the party, so let me know if I'm discussing something you guys already went over. First off, Atlas, this is my first time seeing you with a camera. You look beautiful today. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd smack. Tonsil, what's up? I haven't seen you since. I want to say we did debate one Hello. for the R- the Republicans on Wix panel. That's the last time I've seen that. what's going on. So know, man. two things, one-to-one comparing the white and black demographic is a huge issue that people often bring up. You cannot compare these two demographics. I made a big, long, hour-long video about it. when you're looking at the two demographics just based on race. You're looking at a very young median age of the black demographic is in the 20s. The, which is the most common age, I should say. I don't know the difference between median mode and whatever. So the most common age of a black male is in his mid-20s, which is right in the general age of committing crime, having higher car insurance. All sorts of different things come from having a younger demographic. So to say that there's less opportunities per capita when you just compare the two different racial demographics, obviously you're going to see white people making more money because they're more often 50 years old, which means they're more educated, have more work experience, things like that. So it's just, I would say you can get some good numbers from there. Just be careful when you assume the two, when you compare the two demographics like that, there are a lot more smaller factors you're overlooking that could potentially lead to those disparities besides just a lack of diversity. Secondly, well, 
really oh, quick, sorry. can you turn the sensitivity on your noise gate down? Because you're, the beginnings and endings of your words are all cutting out. It's a little hard to follow. Oh, my bad. Saying. It's my thumb, actually. I'm pulling off too soon. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'll just say that there's a big amount of disparities between the black and white demographics. So just comparing them as a one-to-one, -one, <laughs> it leaves a lot of room for other things that you're just looking over when you're assuming it's just a lack of no, diversity. Then also, at, at the diversity point, we see with uh, affirmative action and getting people into colleges, when you start to get some of these other groups in the colleges based off of skin color, you start to see like, okay, so let's say some black kid from the inner city scores and 1200 on his SATs and need a 1400 to get into Harvard, but they let him in based on diversity. The chances of that person flunking out are substantially higher. So we actually see uh, this push for diversity in terms of education failing because you're putting people that are not at the level for a Harvard level education into Harvard or Cambridge or whatever these high esteemed Ivy League uh, institutions are, and you're setting them up for failure by pushing them too hard too fast. Not saying the effort is in the wrong place. I do like the effort, and I'm going to probably disagree with Drone Tech on the idea behind diversity, equity, inclusion, but I will say some of the results haven't been ideal. Can I interject? I biggest, quick? Oh, go ahead, Atlas. Go ahead. I think I just want to point out. I think my the biggest negative to DEI programs is that they usually come in the form of, in my opinion, they come in the form of like HR departments and uh, private. Uh, like, they, there's not really much, there's, and there shouldn't be much training from the government to how to like enforce these things. And then the court, as we're like seeing now, is kind of parsing out how like in Harvard, some students are actually yet yeah, like they are. They are discriminating against other people based on the color, you know, against white people. And people do go to court and they do win, even if they are white, right? Like, I, I think that the because the language is loose on around uh, civil rights and how we how we apply um, because because our population changes, right? We got to We got to anticipate for the future. Um, I, I think the problem comes is when people start to like be, build training materials on how to discriminate and they fail when doing that, right? Um, when really most materials that you kind of see publicly available are about more about awareness and and helpfulness and you know trying to make sure that you're you're not you're you're actively not selecting for another person by their race right like they're they're hope they're to remove bias not gain bias and the biggest problems happen is when the training you know fails and that, that's like a, a question. that's not a huge problem but so can we all agree here that the ideology behind diversity in a workplace is that minds from different cultures are going to be able to think of something that you wouldn't because you haven't had that type of experience in your life. That's part of it. But it also folds in with the equity part in that um, if everybody came from a fair starting field, you would already have that sort of diversity. And the fact that we have historical injustices against specific groups mean you need to give some groups an extra leg up in order for them to meet. So the equity folds into so yeah, in but, order to have diversity, you need to have right. But that logic is so flawed and, and can really like spiral in on itself pretty quickly, I think. And especially if you I always like to think if you take humans back to the starting point where we're all starting from the same spot. Right. There's still like inequities between people for different reasons. And maybe, you know, maybe they're just uh, uh, having to do environmental or maybe they're, you know, personal. I don't know. There's always going to be some sort of difference between people and I don't think I mean that's why we've chosen equality over a communist state of equity at least up until I, this point I don't think communism as a former communist communism is not about equity <laughs> okay uh, I'm sorry yeah I, that probably isn't uh correct I the, the equity is was it Marx was is equity a Marxist I don't I don't think so no I've looked uh, into this before and well, it me, actually me, is kind of hard to like, nail down let me be like more like honest. It could be like a a later you know. Thing it's something that came out of like a for a later Marxist you know. School well, let me just say like this: Marxists and socialists and, and communists all seem to really like equity. So I, I have can a question. Can we for say that? Then based on capitalists don't like because... equity. Like, what do you mean? That's such a weird statement. Well, that's who is promoting equity. Who who are the people promoting equity? It's all far left people. Those who don't have it usually. 
Those, those who promote that's not true. It's mostly white, rich liberals. I live in a neighborhood that's and they all promote it. <laughs> that is yeah. not true. I, while we were researching most Filipino, this earlier, most Mexican households, Mexican Filipino Mexican. households, most black households, or not most black households. I apologize, but a lot of them are conservative and don't agree with this. Especially like Mexican and Filipino households, mostly vocal, what the, uh, no, but I, And I pointed out myself that I pointed out myself yeah. that uh, that um, uh, Bernie. Uh, doesn't support equity. He supports equality, which is kind of my point that Bernie is a pretty far left guy, and even he doesn't support equity. Okay, over equality. really quick, it is not true that it's mostly white people. All right, um, let me just find it right here. Really? What's like, not mostly uh, white people? No, I, I think that I'll, I'll agree with what he's saying because I'm just a lot of minorities that are allowed in to these Ivy League colleges under the DEI principles are brainwashed with leftist ideals, it's and they true. also promote that. I, I don't understand how it can't are, be mostly white people considering they make up most of the argue. population. That would literally just right. make sense. That's true. Right, you're right. I, I, would, <laughs> I, would, argue, I would argue, however, the reason why there are so many uh, foreign students in universities is not because of DEI and is strictly because of capitalism, <laughs> because universities charge those foreign students a fortune. So it has nothing to do with diversity or anything. It has everything to do with money. There's also going to be some amount of prestige for being seen as like an international school rather than like a, a local little hinky dink college town. So like that'll also be a factor into it. Really quick, I'm just going to read a very quick paragraph of some percentages. More than half of workers, 54, say their company or organization pays about the right amount of attention to increasing DEI. Smaller shares say their company or organization pays too much attention, 14%, or too little attention, 15%. And 17% say they're not sure. Black workers are more likely than those in other racial and ethnic groups to say their employer pays too little attention to increasing DEI. Uh, they're also among the most likely to say focusing on DEI at work is a good thing. 78% of black workers say this, while white workers are the least likely to express this view. 47%. That's why I didn't say per capita. That's why I said most. Yeah, just the fact that there's primarily five times as many white workers as black workers. Just this, based this isn't on a per capita. Stuff. I didn't say... You said 79% of black workers and 79% of whatever are the, the other demographics. That's per capita. Can yeah, you send me 20, the article, please? Twenty percent of white workers make up more than a hundred percent of black workers. Just flat number. Just yeah, because. and let me show you this article too. Yeah, I mean, we're this we're not talking pretty... about per capita of black or white people or percentage of them. This is uh, that, or this at is least a, that's uh, not what you're what we were talking about earlier. This, this is, is a, a national nationally representative uh, survey of five thousand nine hundred and two U.S. workers, um, including cool. f for yeah. So this isn't per capita. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you say in like percentages spread, per capita, if you take your exact numbers and spread them out there. over the entire United States, forty-nine percent of white workers are just more more white people in mass than is, black people that exist in the United States. Like, there's, I think it's like twenty-five percent of white workers are a bigger mass of people than all black people in the United States workers are not. So, even if a hundred percent of black workers were for DEI. At a flat rate, twenty one percent of white workers is more than a hundred percent of black workers. If you want me to clarify, sure. yeah, maybe I misunderstood you. But it said that you said that mostly white people support this, and that black people yes. and Hispanic people are more conservative, and they disagree with this. But this yeah. is saying that seventy eight percent of black workers say this, while white workers are the least likely. To I, I took away the black part he after I took away the black part. He said okay, Filipino. That. Yeah, I yeah. Missed that. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want me to clarify, I I meant mostly like mostly white people vote for Democrat, mostly white people vote for Republican. But there, in, in terms of the percentage of white people and black people, yes, it could be different. So or among their own groups. Real quick, I, and I have it up for the audience in 2021. In total, U.S. Uh, companies increased uh, U.S. workforces by 323,000 people, and of those. 20,000 were white workers. The other 94% were people of color, which I hate that term because white people are not void of color. And it's weird how it's like basically everyone in humanity with white people like out on their own. <laughs> it's like separate from the, everybody else. Anyway, that's just another weird thing about the language used with that. But uh, what do you, what do you think about that? Is that a good thing? I mean, can, can you, can you 
repeat that sorry i was reading a dm from it's uh earlier. this is from bloomberg it's a bloomberg article and they said in 2021 in total they increased uh u.s workforces by 300 uh, companies increased uh, u.s workforces by 323,000 uh people in 2021 and of that 20,000 were white workers 302,570 were 94 were people of color I, I would want to look into that here. more because I, I heavily yeah, doubt I would, that. I heavily yeah, doubt that, so I would want to see that article. I have actually. I, not, I, would also, I, would also I have like seen people argue I would also about like the to stats. See the breath here. Here. Yeah, but I'd also like to see as part of that stat, right? If we're going to go look into the agros of the stat, I'd also like to see what kind of jobs here um, they're using for those numbers. Um, because if we're talking yeah, about minimum wage jobs, jobs then we're you've got a really clear idea. Right, so that's what I want to see. I was going to make that same point Incarn in Incarnation made as well. Incar Incarnation is 100% correct. If you're talking about you low-skill right. labor and white people being an older demographic, well, you're not going to work a low-skill labor job when you're 50 with an education. So, yeah, I'd just like to look more into that statistic. Yeah. That doesn't sound very right to me. Yeah, I mean, I, it sounds 100% right to me. Younger demographics are going to take low-skill labor jobs much more often. So if it's all like service industry jobs that don't pay very good, and you got a lot of unemployed, young, Hispanic, black, non-white people, basically, because white people, if you look at uh, census repopulation rates over the last, like, 50 years, white people are repopulated at a much lower rate than their population size by right. almost half as much. So and it, they're, yeah, they're really legal immigration to that. Sorry. Yeah. Well, legal, too. I got three kids. I got four. <laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> no, look, I, I just so we're clear yeah, here, five. like, I, I am not against, oh, wow. like, every Congrats. group getting jobs and everything, all right? I'm, what I'm worried about is this push for equity actually turns into, like I said, it's a systemic racism against white people that people have in their heads is actually a good thing. And that's why I posed the question. So is DEI a violation of civil rights? And there are a lot of, uh, of lawsuits going out against companies. RW did some research earlier, if he wants to tell you about it. Uh, basically finding that these corporations are now amending because they're getting sued. Now they're amending the language of these things, which is interesting because the way they're, they're trying to get around civil rights, basically, and it's almost an acknowledgement that they it, know that they are going to have to do that in order to achieve this goal that they want to achieve. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that I'm a good sorry? thing? Incorporation adapting to the changing climate, to the changing labor. Isn't that a good thing? Like, isn't that what you want it depends to see? On whether, it depends on whether it's a good idea or a bad idea if they're adapting to is it, it. Is right. it bad, is it bad to, to, to violate our civil rights, Atlas? Well, what you're saying is people are going to court, right, in the United right. States, and they're winning right. lawsuits, and the companies have to change the language of their hiring practices. Right. And so right. I don't that, see they're a systemic get... problem because I see a system self-correcting. And I, no, I don't see a problem because I mean, it's just, But it's not correcting I see at all. a problem because it's they're conforming to something that isn't right. You literally just said that they're amending right, they're the language. Right, they're conforming to something that's bad. Like, yeah. They're right. amending could, the could, language, could, correct. Could, the could, question could, is, are they doing it because they ideologically, ideologically oh. believe something different now, or are they just changing the wording so that it's no longer legal? illegal well, to so to, I want to point I want to I want to I want to I want to speak on what Atlas is saying right like I mean the laws we know today may be 100 years old right and they may have been adapted over the over the changing uh, over the change of society and it's always this tug and pull sort of thing with laws as they get pushed they're too hard they get pulled back and then they find a happy medium where they seem to stay for a long time so what atlas is saying is correct and this is what we want out of our justice system and our legislation system is that if there is too much of a push the 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 principles or or in this case constitution is able to pull back on the severity of those laws and and have them have them you know have companies or the population fall in line more with what the constitution Institution is and you have to expect people will push the lines of what you can do and can't say and that's why you have these structures that allow them to be pulled back and say oh this is too much it's just this takes time this takes years this takes this century this takes like you know decades to to be fully seen through to to see and then in, in that and in, in that time we have conversations like this and that allow these these legislations to eventually find the right path towards what you know the majority of the population seem to want yes and no because the, there's the example of uh when trump was when trump ended a certain practice of dei 
in the federal government. And then when Biden got back in, he revoked that. So then it went right back. In that in that instance, it's no longer a back and forth court issue among society. It's just like this is what we're doing in the federal government now. Can I elaborate? It, it is though, because you're talking two changing presidents who are elected by people. I want to elaborate on Atlas's point a little bit because I think he's on to something a little here. Um, essentially, the pendulum swings in different political directions, and it swung too far. Lawsuits were filed. The system's autocorrect. Think of it, if, for instance, uh, Trump putting six Republicans on the Supreme Court. They overturned Roe with the Dobbs decision, and then it's left up to the states to do what they want. And some states passed some pretty moderate policy. Others went way too far. Lawsuits were filed. And now we're seeing the 50-state experiment where um, abortion policy that everybody can agree on is eventually going to be the end goal. We just have to get there through legislation, lawsuits, and et cetera. That's kind of what's going on with DEI right now is dumb leftists got their hands on somewhat of a good idea and they went way too fucking far with it and they got sued and they started using it for anti-white, anti-Western shit, which was what leftists do. And now that they've tainted it, it has a bad taste in its mouth when you think about it. But there really are some good core things that come out of DEI on its inception that I feel like if we really dove into the actual definitions, everyone would be like, yeah, you know what? I, I understand and agree with that. So. Well, I, I think my question is, you were, like, you were here the earlier, way that earlier, I'm, we, we kind of already said this. Yeah, maybe, what, maybe, I, what maybe, I want to know let's is... Let's all go real quick, please. Yeah, I, what I want to know is, like, what it seems to me is, like, DEI is a broad concept of a type of... Um, a, a kind of uh, schema that you can put into policy, and you can kind of choose what kind of policies you're going to enact from it, and you can decide how far those policies are going to go. So, like, the DEI itself isn't necessarily bad, but the way that some people are implementing, you know, some of these concepts into policy is what is so irritating to everyone, right? I it think is DEI is bad by its by its very own definition because I don't think diversity is our strength. I think it's a big weakness. I mean, there's some there's some stuff to unpack right there. Like, do you yeah. think that it's a bad thing to have, you know, like white people and black people and Asian people all working together? No. Oh. That's Hold a very on. neutral thing. For let's say you open up a business where it's grabbing things off a really high shelf, and all you have to hire are a bunch of Chinese people. Would diversity be your strength to hire one black person? Uh, it depends uh, listen, on how tall Yao they Ming have. exists. Okay, <laughs> Yao Ming exists. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. There are like, lots of tall about there are tall. <laughs> here's the thing: is that diversity? I, I could is restate good. my point. Where I, yeah. it, it can be positive, neutral, or bad, but most of the time I think it's neutral, especially when it comes to hiring different people. I think it's okay. neutral in most fields. Besides, like, that you know what you brought up other, uh, like facial too. technology, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But the, 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 the things that focus on right there, just a very short thing bad. here, right? Just a short yeah. thing here is like you don't know what you don't know until it becomes a problem, right? That's what happened with that camera company, right? They didn't know yeah. that they were like, missing out on that aspect of you know the development of their technology until it became a really, really big problem for them. And then it was basically too late. Now we have to, you know, scale back our operation, you know, redo some stuff, and then we can try and release it. So, like, you don't know what you don't know. It depends, I, but sure, yeah, I can agree on that. I want to say something real quick, too. I, I also think that, you know, um, these, these programs, unfortunately, are not cognizant of, of what I like to call culture shock, right? And, and it's when you have an established culture, and then there are a, a different sort of, there's different cultures that are being not only, not, they're being forced upon, you know, the current established culture of a workplace, and it's not necessarily happening organically, right? So it's like you, you, you have 20 employees, and then all of a sudden, you add five or six more employees. Well, it's going to change the dynamic, irrespective of race, it's going to change the, dyna the dynamic of the culture of the company, right? Now, add more variables to that, different cultures, different language, people who speak differently, there's accents, there's, 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 there's a ton of different variables, and, and you can force what I like to call a culture shock within, you know, even society with, with you know, immigration from 
I would say wrong places compared to your 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 dominant population, and also in companies being forced to hire by diversity, which could create a, a rippling effect of culture shock throughout your 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 company. So it, it, there's both good and bad. It, it's it's objectively good and it's objectively bad. Okay, but so like, can okay, we all so agree? Can, can sure. I? Can I? All right, so. Let me just get a quick round of hands. So is DEI as it's currently being Im implemented and the people that are driving it, is it a violation against civil rights? Yes or no? It can be yes. It can yeah, be. Yeah, I agree. Needs, in, most cases, yes. in most I, cases, I, yes. In most cases, yes. When leftists get their fucking hands on it, absolutely. That's it. That's it. So, so okay. So I think I can but even here's agree. The question. I'm, I'm, I, hold I, on. I'm going to quickly I, agree yeah. that I could agree with DEI uh, on, on some level, I could I could come I could agree with you on that because I'm for diversity. I am. I want all of us to work together. And but I think the I agree with you. The way it's being implemented is uh, counterproductive. The entire thing. As you have to divorce it from critical race theory to then I believe say what you're saying to agree with it. Well, because you're attaching. I don't understand why they use the word equity. I think that like equity is just forced forced diversity. Equity has to involve quotas. Equality okay, but does the exact not. same stuff is being talked about in England, and they just replace the word equity with equality. <laughs> well, we we can't just do that. You don't want to just replace a word because those are two very different things. Right, but like what? Like mm -hmm. if we're like hinging the entire thing on equity, like some people would see this as equity, some people would see it as equality, right? <sighs> Like, but, I, I think it's like stupid to focus like so heavily on one word. No, well, I don't word think it's stupid thing. at all. But I don't think it's stupid at all because well, it's because we're assuming that we're using it in the correct manner. On like, what did you say, England, who is using equality in the complete wrong way? I they, they're well, how do you know if you don't even England, know what policies? So they're kind of stupid. Well, yeah, listen, I, I'm not going to sit here and not dog on the British, okay? Um, but <laughs> Mate. but yeah, like I I guess like I just. I just want to say that the yeah, definition of equity, real quick, is the quality of being fair and impartial, which is weird. That sounds like equality. That's different than the one I posted. So, but no, I... equality isn't necessarily fair or impartial. Anyway, uh, the value of the shares issued by a company. Yeah, that's – see, that's – people, People, I think, mostly think that. They think, oh, I've heard okay, of equity let me ask you guys, economic Let me terms. ask you guys this then. All right, Th like this is the first example of, before we even start looking into anything, right? Diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion, right? Um, I have extremely bad ADHD. I am a non-functional human being. If I'm not medicated, I can't focus on fucking anything. It really sucks. Uh, when I was in grade school from... I have like, ADHD. Grade, yeah, it fucking sucks, doesn't it? Um, when, when I was in grade school, there was a program. I don't know if this is all over the U.S. or if this is only a Texas thing. Um, but there's a 504 program, right? And what that means is, okay, we recognize that you have this thing going on, right? You have ADHD, you have dyslexia, you know, whatever the fuck. Um, we're going to put you in this program. It means that you have a little bit extra time for your homework because we know it's really hard to focus. Um, it, put, it brings you up to par with like other people that just like naturally have the ability to focus. Um, is this... A bad... That's awesome. That's awesome. Right. So I would I'd say be fine this with is getting like... better education for low income neighborhoods where more black people usually live. I think that'd be awesome too. Yeah. There's so like there there's it seems like everybody agrees there are some aspects of DEI that are good. What I think the problem is is that everyone seems to have a differing level of like uh how much they think it's good or bad. Yeah. Well, it, it's I, I think the workforce and the, um, you know, grade school are, are two very different things. Well, let me you ask you this. Let's groups. say that there's a person quickly, that has. Well. So yeah. quickly, you have two groups here. You have everyone here that has their understanding of DEI and you have all of the workplaces that have their flavor of how they're implementing DEI. Sure. It's not happening organically. Yeah. Um, let, let me ask you this. When it comes to the the workforce just because um i not looking at the camera sorry i don't know who said it um let's say that there's a person Work. that is a really, really good um like programmer but they have auditory like their uh whatever like connects their ears to their brain this is a thing that happens in lots of mental disorders lots of statistics yeah 
uh yeah like it, you have like an auditory processing disorder right so it's hard for you to understand what people are saying unless you like take it really slow but you're a really good programmer do you think that we ought to like have some you know policies in a workforce that allow people with you know issues like that to actually work get all of their stuff done and thrive in the workforce Right, whatever I, um, accommodations we need to give to them, right, so that they can. I, I like that question, and I, 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 there's a few things to unpack. First off, um, yeah, if if they're performing just as well as other developers, sure, but I wouldn't hire them just based on the fact that they have problem with hearing, and we don't have enough people in our in our company who have problems with hearing, and so you know we we need to make sure that our place is very diverse. Sure, I can agree. I will never agree with anything that is a quota-based system. We have to have this many Asians. We have to have this many whites. We have to have this many blacks. I'll never agree with anything that's quota-based, right? Okay, that's, well, that, that's what's right happening there. in our... In, that's what's happening in, in many colleges. I, I can't say much about the workforce, but I, I do know that that is happening. I, I can't say if it's happening in most workforces, but I do know it's happening in, in a lot of different companies. I, have I think a quick that's exactly what's happening. illegalized, but I might be wrong. So... Uh, technically, it's by the civil rights act, but I mean, but, I mean <laughs> yeah. Here's the question. Well, here's, here's the thing about. Uh, here's I'm the sorry. thing I want to say about. Everyone stop. Yeah, someone's trying to ask me a question, and I'm the most sorry, important I, I person wanna, here. Yeah, I just want to ask. I just want to say something. I think hey. There's one thing that we can all agree on. Okay, the biggest right example of failed DEI policies, right, within hiring, is our governments and our bureaucracies, right. You want to see the ultimate failure of that? Look to your government. Look to the people who are writing the legislation. Your bureaucracy has been forced this shit for the last fucking 20 years. They hire people based on quotas because they have to, right? Because they're the government. They're a public figure. They can't, they can't discriminate. And it has created a massive financial burden on our, our countries simply because we needed to accommodate a lot of people. It, to me, that is the biggest glaring example of, of failed DEI examples, where, yes, I agree the government has to hire diversity. However, it being forced, especially in positions of high power, <clears throat> right? Um, can where can you give me like an example of that? Because I, I've never heard that happening I'll in give our you an government. Example. So, hey, yeah, I've been are we talking about like the DPS, uh, or are I'll, we talking I'll about... You, yeah, look, I'll give you a great, great example. I live in Canada. We huh? have two official languages. We have no. two official languages in Canada, right? Just to say real quick. So there are people in high level decision making positions in the government who have been appointed to that position not because of merit, but simply because they speak French. And it creates That's gay. this Does this, that count this as a merit? The, yes. And you have this in you have this in American American bureaucracy as well. They'll hire somebody from a, a person of color who's not as well educated simply because they have to show face. They have to show that they, they're rich. And that to me is where the failed policy, the where it fails and, and, and you see it, it it's failure uh, uh, in your governments. But that's so where you need to can I, can I, I, Okay, French, immediate counterpoint. Really real quick, yeah, let's immediate so counterpoint that. jump in real quick. Yeah, immediate counterpoint to that. Don't you think that like having someone that is a native or like extremely fluent speaker in a language that is not the predominant language of the entire country might be a really important thing, especially merit. in certain like uh, that's a good point. Merit will yeah, never that's... make. I could be that is the a merit. best. That's Hold on, it. It no, is no, merit. no. Oh, okay. Just so it is a merit. Be able to so... speak that language yeah. is a merit. Okay, yeah. Okay, so why are we saying it's is... not? Why are we saying that they're being hired well, simply? Well, well, let's, like, let's talk about let's talk, talk about hiring French, you know, because let's say let's say that there is a percentage of people in Canada that speak <laughs> French. The majority of them are from from Quebec. What if we, and let's say that if they want to hire like a certain percentage of French speakers, they they have to take into account the fact that there's going to be a big percentage of French speakers that don't want to work for that position, and so. And when you discover that, oh, no, we're not being able to meet that target, they'll have to lower their standards just to meet that target. So that's exactly. the problem that's I have with trying, to, with trying to put a quota to try or trying to hire someone because 
Very they want to achieve that something when, in fact, you have a, a big percentage of that amount of French speakers that don't want to do that job. They want to have their own lifestyle that is not involving government. They want to be ca- comedians. They want to work in the car industry. Then why they would they work, work for the, the fucking industry. government? Why would they apply at the government if they don't want to work for the government? Because, because the government, as an example here, right, is a very good pay, and you get to move up the ladder quickly as a French person in within bureaucracy, no matter where you are in the government. Sure. You I feel like we're getting to a completely I'm different just topic. Example, I'm, just giving an exa- I'm just giving an example because this is an example of fourth DEI. This is this is in our charter in Canada that we have two official languages. So this is mandated as it would be in your constitution if you had a uh, a um, uh, uh, an official language and you didn't yeah, have the first, the first amendment, right? So 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 this is an example of of DEI that's being pushed too far. Can, can okay, but, real quick? okay. So I, I just want. Uh, I, I really just want to like, ask this question. Sign us all, sign us okay, all go let's say that I would say that speaking French probably is a merit, like people have been saying. Like, let's imagine, like I'm the world's best social worker. I'm really good at making sure that people get all of the stuff that they need, right? But I only speak English, and there's a huge segment of the population that does not speak English. Now those people are fucked because all of the people that are really really good at helping out the french uh speakers right because there might be some language uh like barrier there not just that we speak different languages but even like google translate isn't going to give you a perfect um translation every time different connotations with different words etc cetera, etc cetera. wouldn't it be, like probably really important to make sure that people are getting i the, think uh, it'd be more important well, to hire both people sorry, so I, think that that's I actually have right. a response to that yeah sure. Do you have a response to that Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. No. All right. Well, I, I just want to say that because you mentioned okay, about right the merit of, about hiring French speakers. Well, here's the thing: French speakers are a minority of the population, and you have to take into account the fact In Canada? That there is going to be a, a big percentage of French speakers that don't want to go into those positions in government. And so, is... when you have to are French Wait, really the, um, the minority of the population in Canada? Google it for Yes, yeah, of course they are. It's only one They're province like, that French speaks speakers, French. really? French speakers yeah. in Canada? Yeah, it's going to be Quebec. There are 38 million people who live in Canada. There's probably 6 to 7 million French speakers. Oh, okay. 7.2 million, about 22.8% of the population. There you go, Alice. There so you go. one Back. fifth of your country oh, 22%. speaks. Yeah. So. A fifth of your country speaks a different language, and you guys don't think that it's probably really, really, really important to make sure that people who need services from the government get that, get that, um, get those services from someone that is able to understand them. Well, yeah, I, I don't I think I don't think you should, you should compare skills to skin color. Wait, 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 can I can I reply to this? Yeah, this is a language. It is. Wait, wait, it is a very exactly. point. I would like to reply to this. Okay, okay. So I do 100% agree with you. If if the if the the public sector has a public facing job in which you know there is a government agent or worker that is expected to interact with uh, the population, and in that population there are people who are French and want to be served in French, the government has an absolute responsibility to meet that demand for their population. The difference, however, comes in to decision making positions. So managers of entire government branch. Who, who have been put into a position because they have some French employees and they need to make sure that they can communicate better to the 28% of the employees who are French rather than the 70% of the fucking employees who are working, right? So you create this this this, this hierarchy problem in which pe- French people who are underqualified, right? If, if, if speaking French is a qualification. However, being educated in the right matter and having the right experience is, is a better qualification. And that should right. be weighed with a much higher uh, a level of of, of um, the scrutiny, if you want to put it that way, than you know being able to speak French in a decision making company a position. Wait, you consider that to because be like skill based. Is- Think about literally any job ever. Okay, like I could be trying to apply for fucking McDonald's right now. Right. Do I live in I live in Houston, Texas. <laughs> I could apply for McDonald's right now and I would probably lose out to someone that has the exact same qualifications but also speaks Spanish. Or I could even be way more qualified and have experience as a fucking grill cook, right? But someone that speaks Spanish might seem a little bit more uh, you know, like a better fit for whatever store I'm applying for because there are gonna be customers that come in that speak Spanish. 
Can I just um, say something? Um, well, here's the thing. What you said, like hiring French speakers, you know, just for the positions like in those government ranks, like the thing is, the fact is, if Get you're going to have to hire French camera. speakers, okay, all right, I'll do that. Look, okay. if, you, if you have to, look, if you have to hire French speakers to be able to those government positions, you have to, they also have to speak English. And what if you hire someone that is a French speaker, but has very bad English skills or have no English speaking skills at all? Like, what is the consequence of hiring French speakers if they don't hire those who speak English? I'm, I'm not saying that. No, you know what, like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll, give you an, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's two people who are working on, oh, just give it up. There's two people who are working together on an assignment. One of them is predominantly French and, and has a very broken English. The other one is English and speaks no French. And these two have a file in which they, they, you know, there's, a, there's obviously a, a bigger file. And of that file, to, to the, there's been, it's been delegated certain responsibilities and they have to work together. So first, forced diversity, forced the, the diversity in this instance has created a backlog, a massive, a massive breakdown in communication. These people can't talk to each other, and the ripple effects of that is that now there's an HR grievance, and now they've got to look into this, and now it's it's got to be why the manager. You're you're stating an extreme. How often is that extreme? Because I've worked in in the so, situation where you can figure it out because you speak enough of the other language. How often is the extreme well, where like you can't even figure it? Can I, right. can so I ask, how many, how many French speakers let, let, in, let him respond Canada real quick. Let, 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 let him respond real quick. And then, and then go for it. Yeah. So, so in this instance where in the, the public sector uh, majority workforce of the bureaucracy has now shifted to a working at home situation, a government branch based in Ottawa where I live, which is where the majority of the, the government offices are, is hiring somebody out in Alberta, right? Because they're an easy hire and they want the position and they need somebody to fill the position. Right. However, there is a structure within the hiring and government which in which managers get paid a bonus for hiring for diversity. So this manager says, great, I've got my English person. Now I'm going to hire somebody from Quebec who refuses to learn English and will also refuse to communicate in English because I need to fill a diversity quota. I need that's to fill a spot. That's extreme, though. That's like, that's like an assumption. No, no, no. No, 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 this is how the hierarchy works. Once you leave the union of the government, you are now in a, in a manager position. You now get bonuses, right, based off of certain key, uh, uh, KPIs. One of those KPIs is diversity hiring. I understand, but, you, but that doesn't mean that the person that speaks French has to have no idea what English is. Like, that's an extreme assumption. That they're hiring them. Yeah, but, but when you have a yes, but when you have a very limited amount of French speakers, less, such as in Canada, where it's only twenty eight percent of the population, you are going to fill that spot with somebody who barely speaks English. I mean, just that seems, has to happen. This, this is happening the, in America. It's the government's role. The government needs to hire people to understand one fifth of its citizens. It can't just ignore them because they speak a different language. They've been there for hundreds no of years. Says we're going to ignore them. We're just say, we have to be very realistic about that because there's not we no, there's not going to be millions of, of Quebecans or or Canadian French speakers that actually want to join the government. Government, you're going to have normal French Quebec speakers or Quebec speakers who just want to work in a normal industry, and that it's, limits. It's cool, but they all. still need to do shit with the government. It's incarnation, could I try and clarify your point? Yeah. Okay, so incarnation is saying that it, it, it's wrong. Like, for example, if we took California, where almost thirty percent of the, or almost thirty percent of the population in California are Spanish speaking, it, it would be wrong to have a government which decides pretty much how you live, to hire based on the fact whether or not you are fluent in Spanish. That would be wrong. Yes. Wait, well, well, like, no, no, that's, no, that's no, totally no, no, fine. No, 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 that's not exactly what I'm saying. No, no, that's not what I'm exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there are certain positions in government in which language should be a highly weighted qualification because you are dealing with the public. There are, however, the other public. positions in the government where language should be less weighted. Right? I think and it's only good for qualifications right. and merit right. should, be, should be more highly weighted I just right but that's not what happened thing. but that's that's not sorry let me just finish wait, wait, let him finish i'm i'm interested just, to hear what he says finish. let him finish but but this is not what happens when you are forced diversity 
right? And this is not this does not happen when your upper management and the people who make the decisions at the end of the day are incentivized to not hire based on merit at the right position, but however, based on on some sort of quota that they need to fill in order to get a an extra check at the that's end of understood. the year. I think that's yeah. There you go. There you go. Does anyone not understand that concept? I get. I just don't see the problem. It's the government's responsibility to hire enough spanish speakers to take all the calls needed from their spanish speaking well he he's talking like, he well, he's saying some so specific jobs in government are good spanish but others speakers, don't need it at all on, I, I just wanna, yeah. sorry go ahead can let's I just give jacob a chance to talk yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. what are the chances okay. Okay. he's laying okay. out Right. He is yeah. looking out. Well, yeah, so here's what I, I say. He looks like he's. Are you really bowling? Are you bowling? Okay. okay. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. <laughs> Go ahead, Jacob. Oh, sorry. It's someone. You know. Um, well, here's what I think. If they want to get Spanish speakers, if they want to get Spanish speakers, here's, they can always. They can always teach people how to speak Spanish. Like, um, there's nothing shop. wrong with learning another language. They can always say, "Hey, let's you're gonna have to commit, actually you're gonna have to commit teach people to like how to speak Spanish." Years. That could work. You're gonna have to commit to three or four years and wait yeah, three or four years. Yeah, exactly. Or, exactly. Yeah, or you just hire someone to speak Spanish. Yeah, so you can yeah. always. Yeah, well, yeah, but. Yes. Listen, I I think what well, my point is. Yeah, but, my, my, but, my, but, my, but teaching yeah. people how to speak Spanish. If someone has a better. If someone is a better fit for the job and they don't speak Spanish, and someone who is a less better fit from the or a worse fit for the job, I should say, and does speak Spanish, you probably shouldn't pick the latter. Fork, get on camera. Look, I'm gonna put it, I want I'm everybody gonna put it, on camera. I'm gonna put it, Come on. I my my camera okay, doesn't gonna, work right now. I'm, I broke you're it. I'm gonna put it, you're on a phone. You're yeah, I broke my phone camera. <laughs> sure, you, sure you did. So, okay. Look, you I'm, turned I'm, it on. I'm, the, yeah. I'm <laughs> If if you're if you're a company that deals in sales or has to solicit other companies to get contracts or whatever, right? And you're trying to get a contract in Japan, it would be if it would be kind of stupid from a company standpoint to send a white person there. And in that case, you would definitely hire based off the qualification needed to speak fluent Japanese and be able to interpret what is being said properly, right? So that's an economic advantage to a diversity hire. Right, but hiring a a uh, a manager, right, which a manager in the government will put it this way, who let's say has to manage uh, twenty five employees and whatever, whatever bureauc bureaucratic bullshit that they have to deal with, right? Rather than hiring the best data entry people who speak English, like the majority of the employees do, they will fill a position only based off of the fact that they speak French. The mere fact that there is a lack of qualified French people who are applying for those jobs means that they will lower their standard for the French employee and they 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 they, they will then hire somebody who is who is not qualified to do the job. So uh, so that's totally that, a great um, if, if I forgot four is a minor. You can get off camera. If, if I may, the problem uh, is you're saying that they are not qualified with the qualification okay, is speaking French. Right, like you, like you're admitting that they're qualified. At the same time, they're not qualified. Like the qualification is French speaking, right? Like that's the qualification. If the qualification is French speaking. We're saying over here. What we're saying over here yeah. is that the government job, because the government job, there's certain mandates they have to fill out because the government has to apply to both French speaking people and English speaking people, right? So they need somebody to, you know, represent that that population. And the qualification is, as we all agree, which is a merit, which is French speaking. Yes. Yeah, but what if they? But what if they don't have that other experiences like if, if other skills? I'll, I'll share a personal experience. I was I worked in IT for a company. I won't give the name. I was the sole Spanish speaking representative for uh, their Puerto Rico line, right? Bueno. And sounds sounds cool, right? Oh, I'm a diversity hire. It's a guaranteed job. It was really easy. I could never promote, right? Because like I, the, the I, I was one, I was Texas one guy. Board. Yeah, just one text. I just the one text for them, right? Because they can speak Spanish, but no one else can speak, right? So kind of th I, there are pros and there are cons, right? And I'm just saying, like, you're, we're not really describing a problem. We're just describing life. I'm just trying to see where there are problems. I well, I don't see anywhere where there's a backlog in Canadian government because of diversity. I th I think we're just kind of talking hypotheticals here. Um, oh, actually, can I, just I mean, throw my, can my, I, my, hey guys, my, my girl, that's true. I, I but, I, but I do like you. Like is actually uh, a high-level government employee, and this is something that is being talked at Not high here. levels of government. 
where where yeah. there is an extreme breakdown in qualifications based off of language, and it is hampering their ability to actually be able to fucking work. And we're this getting, is something that is being talked about. We're getting hey, bogged I, down I, on work quotas. I don't think anybody here is arguing in defense of quotas based on right. So, hey, can I just throw out earlier we were talking yeah. about um, that that quote that uh, stat that from Bloomberg. Mark Cuban just tweeted out today. I got it up on the screen. You can see it if you look in the share there, share screen. He said, uh, he tweeted out today, uh, with that in mind, I don't know what the previous post was, 94% of new jobs in the S&P 100 going to people of color. Sounds about what we ought to expect. It's not evidence of employers going to especially great lengths to hire minorities or discriminate against whites or doing anything other than fishing where the fish are. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just started. That's, if the percentage, if the yeah. percentage, if the percentage were much lower than ninety percent, that would be cause for concern. Like what? Well, the, yeah, country, he's, he's the, country, country, the country is entitled rich man. The country is like sixty something, thirty percent white. Yeah, yeah but if, again, the, if the jobs are meant for young people and you see a high amount of white people getting those jobs, that would mean older white people are getting jobs that are meant for young people, and that would be a cause for concern. Whereas, like, if you have a bunch of low-skill labor jobs, you put them out there. That is prominent right now. Yeah, you're going to get young people. Young people are more often going to not be white just based on repopulation rate. And so you're going to get higher amounts rate, of perhaps. Yeah, that as well. Legal and illegal. Legal mostly. Illegal... 1.5 million people over three years is a lot, but it's like a third of what we take in legally. I'm not. I'm not trying to get into oh, weeds. I'm just saying that is a part of that uh, situation. It is. Can I show this real quick? It just because it's very. It's uh relates to what we're talking about here. The Civil Rights Act. Uh, the rabbit hole on Twitter said, "This sounds like a violation of the Civil Rights Act." And he highlighted this yeah. part. It's for pro. You don't actually read anything, do you? You should read the rest. It's a for-profit web school if they want primar primarily purple purple eaters from Mars. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember this. So, yeah, he's saying, know. like, he's saying if it's a private business, they should be able to hire whoever they want. If it's all white people, that's fine. <laughs> I know I keep harping on this point over and over again for you, but like, a lot of these people they identify as non-white are Hispanics, and within three generations, over half of Hispanics identify as white. They acclimate into the society and they start self-identifying as white people. So these non-white are sometimes skewed numbers. Yeah, the, the category of non-white uh, non is growing. Yeah. But here's the thing about this United 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 going to do this quota system for pilots. Don't they understand that there is going to be a big percentage of non-whites that don't want to become pilots? And now Why? and if they want to try and that smaller percentage because probably because finance because if you're trying yeah, because finance, you finance. Finance. So, someone just parked right ship. next to you bro they're gonna be like what is this guy doing you don't I'm, I'm confused why know. why do we think that non-white people percentage. don't want to be finance why is that not out again for pilots Dar jacob you keep lagging out real bad dude, dude. Dude, can I just throw out here? Sondasol. I just realized. Yeah. In the background, you have a CRT. Is that Chrono Trigger in the background? Goddamn right it is. That's awesome. <laughs> I just so realized that. I'm yeah. like, I saw you had something back there, and I was, I'm like, what the hell is that? Bro, yeah, I can, like, so I've so been know, collecting just, old Nintendo systems and shit for a you. long time. That's awesome, man. I love it. You should see my Thanks. unfinished can part I, of the uh, I, basement here. Up. It's filled with that shit. Fuck yeah, man. The yeah, I gotta take run, guys. It's time. really been a pleasure. I'll uh, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for chilling, Var. Nice to have you here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all See for you later, dude. Uh, Thanks forward, for coming. Forward. Have a good one, later, man. Do you guys want to change topic? I feel like we've kind of come to a consensus on this. I don't know. I, I don't think we've come to an agreement at all. I, I want to throw out a defense of equity real quick. Um, well, you guys I, argued about it for a bit. Well, I don't. I don't defend like I. I defend the idea of like I like the idea of people getting together, but if you have to discriminate, racially discriminate to do it, it's not the right way. Yeah, well, like yeah, equity I think you guys seem to be that. saying like somehow there's some right way of doing that. I don't think there is. So equality, equity, I I feel like it's just a different definition or a different way to achieve equality, and a version of equity that we've had in the United States for 50 years that people don't think of it as equity is the Pell Grant. Where if you're poor, you can't afford to go to college, the government will give you money to go to college. 
not based on race or anything. And they use the Pell Grant in order to help just specifically poor people. They'll even pay some of your bills and give you some money back for well, time you lost. Race specific. So that's equity, though. That that would be why equity could be good. Equity not race so. specific. I'm talking racial quotas. Nobody in here is defending them. Um, that's something that stupid leftists do when they get their hands on it. They start pushing their anti-Western, anti-white, fucking stupid agenda. So and I don't think when they add tax cuts to it as well, it just adds an extra layer to it. Yeah. I don't think you have yeah, any rabbit leftists in here. Yeah. You just got moderates. Can, I, I, okay, this is, here's, a, here's a quick question. We got Atlas. Fuck anymore. We have Atlas. Yeah, here's a question you know, you that got I me, like I'm to rabid. Do, do we think that, like, because it, it, we keep on talking about, like, rabid leftists, and when y'all say leftists, I'm just assuming that you guys mean, like, anyone left leading. As a, as opposed to like what? No, we yeah. mean leftists who are rabid. No, we mean yes, leftists who are rabid. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, you, know, you, know, you can be a left winger. Left -winger. Well, you can also no. be a rabid left winger. You can be leftist and fine. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. Atlas okay. is awesome. a rabid left winger. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, I mean, Sansa. <laughs> well, no, I, I actually. Left. Hold on, I have so met some rabid lefties. I fight with them really, really hard. Okay, because I used to be like a a left wing fucking socialist person all right so i i do know but like when people talk about leftists they either mean um you know like a socialist like a tanky someone that is like a uh, some, marxist I right. right i got it uh, yes or or I mean, they could be talking about someone like destiny who is very very much not a socialist it, it can right? include both of those i don't think it, it, it can include both of those now, the leftist destiny's uh, about an interesting guy i got into it with him again today by the way did you really? Well, I'll have to I watch that. During his uh, research stream, what he was doing during in the text, we didn't. I don't get, respect Destiny all that much. I don't but know he, if that's a it. hot take. I, but... I made a video of it, but yeah, uh, Destiny is far beyond what he should be. Let's try well, to get. I would like. To, I would like. Smart guy. guy. Destiny's a smart guy. Tyler's uh, I, I last point. Him. I gotta go. Oh no, he's very intelligent. Okay. Yeah. Not to make the topic about Destiny, but like. The, the the real question that I wanted to ask is like we keep on talking about like rabid leftists uh, doing all this stuff and I I guess like the question that I have is like w there seems to be so much like thought that there is intentional malice right like there is they are doing something because they think that it's evil right and they know that it's evil and they know that it's racist against white people and they just hate white people like yeah. as someone that as someone that mm -hmm. was a leftist and um was a huge part of those circles for a long time. I don't, I, I feel like that's really not what people are meaning um, when there, they say these things. Both camps exist though. Both camps yeah, I won't, I won't disagree with that. I think as I've moved exist, away from yes. socialist circles, right? As I've moved away from those circles, I won't you're necessarily You're saying that disagree. they don't exist, but it also sounds like you're saying that's not really how it is. Well, I, I mean, don't think it's the I don't think it's ideology the predominant. seems to be centered around the main enemy of white, uh, heterosexual white men. And white people at large, because they're like adjacent to that or whatever, right? Everybody uh, thinks they're on the right side of history. They, they think that they're doing right. You're absolutely correct. They think that like, this hardcore eye for an eye racism against white people is actually I don't think it's a good. yeah. I don't think it's an eye for an eye like on racism. There are some people that I do think are like that. Um, like I'm, my mind just changed. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, I my mind was changed a little bit on this. Um while researching some of the stuff around uh what do you call it um critical race theory uh but it not to like a really great extent so like i think that most people mean well right but looking at the the discord earlier before i started looking at stuff people were talking about like this is their plan it's all part of the agenda do we do we think that it's like a, a deep conspiracy or do we like, so you're you're taking an example of an extreme person in this server talking about extreme people on the other side of the fence. So yes, that person that was making those quotes is a very strong opinion person that is extremely. Okay, unheard. I was just taking a temperature who, who check to see like how. Here? Yeah, I'm not trying to like call anyone out specifically. I'm just like here. trying to get a temperature check that? of the room on how like, how deep into the like hatred for the other side we are. Uh, so I can no, see I, where I the conversation is going to be. I think I'm there's like a lot the of people left. who I think there's a lot of people. So I I I'm 43 years old. You know, when I was in high school, I was pretty what would be considered woke now. 
And I literally was very suspicious of other white people. Felt like there was something wrong with white people in general. My group of friends was all like black, Asian, you know, know. like I was the only white guy in my group. And uh, I I went to college and I started questioning. I'm like, you know, there was a lot of things that happened basically. And uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of people going through that sort of thing. Like white people, I don't know, like. I don't even know what my point is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what your point is. I, I guess like what I would imagine the point that you're getting at is like people will leave this and then they will kind of like grow out of it, right? Right. Or is that exactly. not what we're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I actually used to be a, left, a, a person on the left myself. Now I've just shifted over to uh, libertarianism myself. Yeah, because you see that a lot in the younger people. There's a lot of videos of a lot of the uh, HBCU colleges and stuff. I don't know if you've seen these. There's a few of them. And the students there, man, it's like hopefully like this isn't like something that they grow up and like this continues. Like I do hope that that, that is something that's just young, you know. Yeah, for the most I part, I think that like it is. Go well, ahead. I just feel like the reason why they do that is because they suffer from a lack of consequences. So... They just don't understand what consequences mean for them, you know? Life experiences. What do you mean they don't understand yeah. what consequences mean? Well, well I think what he's saying is that they haven't had enough life experience to justify their beliefs. That's kind is of that what an I'm Australian getting. Taco Bell behind you? Yes, that's an Australian Taco Bell. That's awesome, man. They're oh. rare. Cool. Why are there Great. Australians yeah, all um, over the place yeah, all of a sudden? Yeah, Fuck. I, yeah, I have a quick uh, question for Sanfal to go back to earlier, and this is a philosophical question based on what sure. you were talking about. There was a coder that was, say, autistic, and he had trouble communicating. Sure. And we were talking about hiring that person, and I said, that here's a different scenario. You have that autistic person that's hard to communicate with, and he's, the, he's one of the best two coders in the world. The other best mm-hmm. coder is also there to be hired and all they they can talk and, and communicate just fine but they can only yell to communicate so here you have two individuals that are in front of you a person that has trouble communicating and a person that communicates perfectly fine and screams all the time to talk which of those two seems to be the right choice for the job I'm, 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 just listen, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the auditory problem person every single fucking time dude every single fucking time Right. Assuming equal ability, yeah. assuming equal yes, ability, equal ability, ability. Yeah, I'm not having someone screaming in my fucking workplace all fucking day long. And I, I'm not providing ibuprofen to all my workers. They can bring their own. Yeah, no, I understand. Right? I understand. Yeah. I just feel bad if we end up in court for decisions like that. You know? Oh because yeah, no. Again, like because I would. Have, yeah, that's what I've been saying. Like I would never that. agree with like just a, a quota system or anything like that. Like that seems really bad, and it seems like there could be a lot of really bad things that come out of that. So. I to be honest, when you mentioned the autistic, the autistic comparison, I'm autistic myself. Like, to be honest, sometimes I don't even know how loud I speak because <laughs> maybe it's because of the bass of my voice or some, or some shit, you know. But to be honest, I work at a Domino's delivery driver myself. I can drive a car, you know, to, to deliver pizzas. So, to be honest, not every person with autism is the same. They have, they express themselves differently. They show their um, autism symptoms differently so and they don't think the same like any other autistic persons the one thing that is mainly something to that? about it now is how they think they want to you know do diversity but they don't they need to know that diversity must also not sacrifice merit and skill and qualifications to be able to make it successful so i just kind of feel like if you're going to put in diversity you're going to still give people with autism to prove themselves that they can do well Otherwise, they'll be just like a high, just based on their disability. Disability. Sure, I think that the the well. real aim is is less to just like have more autistic people or more black people or you know whatever. I think that the the aim, like the the stated goal that people have when they're talking about this is like, hey, it seems like in society these people don't get a fair shake, right? I think that like if we're talking about autistic people, especially in the workforce, probably they don't get as much of a fair shake as someone who is not autistic. Um, and we and like the the stated you know goal is like, hey, we should we should do something to make it to where you know whether it's like some sort of accommodation for them in the workplace or something like that. We should allow these people to actually you know function in a workplace right and we should um Can give I them the chance and all of that yeah go for it 
Okay, so I'm also autistic myself, and I know there, like they said, there is like levels of autistics. Like for me, I am a very antisocial autistic. I prefer jobs where I can do my job without like a whole bunch of interaction. And I know there's autistics that can manage with lots of people and do lots of things. And is, is everybody you know, here autistic? Hey, listen, I'm a gamer, okay? I Maybe. I am the only normal I'm, person here. I, I never thought I was, normal. but I'm starting to wonder. I am the only normal maybe, person in this room. If we're all autistic, we should actually change the, this uh, Discord server to the autistic channel. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Population hasn't taken yeah, over just yet, Dark. I'll find out. No, it could I'm be. fucking normal. And I healthy. agree with them. It should you. be some your dogs are cool people shit, dude. are I like that. Dogs. It's just so important much. for those who I want, I want them to are anti <laughs> Go ahead, Sebastian. People who are within the same category, but also ones who are very, you know, outward. You know, extroverts can work with people that they know they can do. Like myself, I've hope and I pray that I find jobs where I can work with people that are within um I guess you'd say a mild manner personality because most of the time if I'm working with somebody I want to be able to do my job but also know that they're not gonna like jump on my skin. Right. I mean you gotta you you will be able to find that place hopefully that's a decision you make and then you just have to hope that you come across people that are good people. Doesn't matter if people are autistic or not they could want to work, I mean, inverted or uh, extroverted, introverted, extroverted, doesn't matter for autism. You just got to find people that you enjoy being around and they will work with you because they're good people. That's my, like, my life experience. Yeah, and I mean, what is the job I just recently got to is actually working to my, uh, to my strengths. The people that I interviewed with were very down to earth and people I could easily talk to. Hey, what do you guys think about free Gaza? I say, I don't really mind if Gaza, if Israel was there instead. Just get rid. Just give give Gaza to to uh, give. Bro, like, about to what do you guys think about what's chat. going on there? Instead uh, of free you Gaza, we should say. Honest? You guys we should say completely like, honest about what I think like, there. What's going on in Gaza? To a degree. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Here's what I think. I think that Israel has every right to do what they're doing, and I hope they uh, wipe out Hamas from the face of the earth, and that whole area becomes a part of Israel and grows and prospers, and the people, the Palestinian people, can uh, actually live life and stop uh, being under a repressive uh, Arab Nazi regime. Instead of free Gaza, you should say expensive Gaza. And then none of the Jews will want well, Gaza's anymore. gone, right? Jeez. I mean, at this point. Almost. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. So <laughs> um, I have a pointed question. Much explosions. I have a pointed question. Lately, there's been a lot of information in the news about starvation happening in Gaza. And I'm curious for the people here to reflect on, is Israel using starvation as a, a tactic for war? Probably. Or is it something else where they're... I mean, the food is not I getting don't to know for sure, but I would happen. guess, yes, they're using siege tactics and it's a war. Yeah, probably. No. So I, I, would say this much. I hate I, that people are suffering. It's not there, right, but it's all a part of war. Right. I, mean, I hate that people are suffering. I don't blame the people. Uh, I, uh, well, not totally. I mean, look... Look, they elected the government. Like, did we really give a shit about the people of Germany when they elected Nazis and they got what came to them? Like, I kind of just feel like that's what happened there. Okay, so when Gaza was uh, with when when Israel withdrew from Gaza, they took all the Israelis that were settled in Gaza and ripped them from their homes and forced them into Israel. When they did that, one of the things that they gave up was a giant hydroponic farm. They set it up nice. They gave it to the Palestinians. Hamas went in and destroyed it, took all the pipes out and used them for weapons. We've been giving them humanitarian right. aid in the in the tune of billions of dollars a year to feed their people. Oh, Hamas is taking it. They're fucking storing the gas and talk. They're taking so you're saying it's not a talk. tactic of war. That starvation it's not is a happening tactic because of, of what's happening yeah. in Palestine itself. Well, it's a, Israel it's a, was it's giving a, them water, power, and food, giving them for free. Right. When they got exactly. attacked by them, they cut that shit off. Good point. They're allowed to say, I'm not going to supply the people fucking right. attacking us with free power, food, and water. Exactly. So, yeah. Like, 
the, the, this entire conflict, and, and this is something I noticed way back in high school, like the same iteration happened over and over and over and over. And it becomes clear over time that there's people that are like literally keeping this conflict going for some reason. They want to keep it stirred up. Israel seems to be done with that. And I'm happy like they that they need to end it because it needs to stop. Uh, yeah, the, the P Egypt, all the these Arab countries and other forces are have been using the Palestinian people for years as sort of cannon fodder against Israel. And that's who needs that's to be blamed. That's why they build their hospitals in heavy insulated uh, populated areas. Israel just said, uh, Egypt just had a military coup. They don't want any more of these people in because they just spent the last, like, whatever X amount of years forcing the Muslim Brotherhood into these mountains. I don't know what they're called. And if they bring in another million people from Gaza, that Hamas is, is uh, a tie of the Muslim Brotherhood in right. a different country. So, like, if they bring that well, in, that just strengthens the opposition to the government. They don't want him. Well, he, exactly. Is Nobody does. Jordan doesn't want him. Jordan is Palestinians. Jordan doesn't want them. One what second, does that Jacob. tell you? Yeah, Jacob, Jacob, you're so let's, lagging. Let's give him, like, real bad. Give him, at least give him a chance, though. Israel. Can you hear me? Take a chance, okay. Or right, who wants to go for next? You, oh, my God. <laughs> you're, you're lagging really bad, bro. Can I, you so hear I'm me? Gonna give, Let's give Texan the chance, and then let's give Texan. Jacob the chance. Again. Texan, get on cam, bro. I know you're on. I know you got cam, bro. I don't have a camera. Are you? But anyway, uh, no. Israel just sent uh, uh, several truckloads of food, food, fuel, and medical supply today to Gaza, and the uh, Gazans that are there are actually Egyptians, and nobody from Egypt is sending any aid. Just so y'all know. Right. Okay. okay. So, do you think that, that that stuff will make it to its user uh, no it never does okay. no it never it's does. crazy to no, me that Hamas this shit's gone on as long as it has and uses them to their own advantage so like yeah. is there nobody to defend like we have no pro gaza any any of that here okay it's so, so funny how... i i feel this is okay this is how i'm gonna do this i am broadly in support of um israel in this but i feel like everybody's a little bit shitty in this in this conflict okay over the course of history um, war is okay. shitty. Okay, that's interesting. War, okay. Let's hear what you have we to can, say. We can, we can, we can say like I'm war interested. is shitty, but like we can do, we can do war better, or we can do it worse. All right, where there's a lot of people that are dying for no reason, or you know, whatever. So, Very little. Okay. Here's yeah. Here's here's okay. the here's the real thing that's going on here. All right, there is a huge uh, you know conflict that's been going on for like a century at this um, at this point, about eighty years. And the Palestinians really were dealt a fucking shit hand in this conflict. They were absolutely fucked. They um, they had a whole bunch of people come in, basically take over land that they were living on for a long time. Did they own that land? No, not technically. The Ottomans owned it. We not could true. be a little bit more understanding. The Ottomans literally owned Palestine before the end of World War One. And then the British right? took it. And then the British took it over, and then they split all of these different regions up as the Ottomans mostly had. All right, and Britain had a uh, a problem, and their problem was they made promises to everybody, and they can't keep promises to everybody when those promises conflict. That's what led to like the majority of this conflict. The Palestinians kind of got fucked when it came to um, the first partition plan. Uh, they were the majority of the population, uh, but they that? got like when was that? Uh, nineteen forty-eight. Okay. Or no, no, no. What, they, wait, what, wait, hold what, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's stop. I want right to make sure that quick. I have the date right because there's. Okay. I think the you're first close. partition plan, and yeah, I think it's either nineteen forty-eight or something like that. Yeah, I think that's right. And that's why that's why I stopped you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I just want to point out real quick little detail that I think is important given the narratives that are current today. Right? Who? What, on, what's, sign, sign. Sign. what's significant about the Palestinians in that area? Uh, all... In which area? In the era. I'm sorry, the era. Oh, in that era? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the... There's several significant things. Which thing do you, are you talking well, about? Well, the main, the main thing is that who are they allied with during that time? He wants to call them Nazis. The... <laughs> no, no, no. They were allied well, with the Ottomans. Are. No, wait, allied. wait, wait, hold on. No, no, the 48, 48, 48. Um, yeah. They're allied uh, with Hitler. I'll just, they're allied with are Hitler. Are they allied with Hitler? So are the Japs. 
Okay. Yeah, that's true. Can, can I put my Yeah, but Japanese are awesome now. It. So Okay, but Palestinians are still basically and, Nazis. Whatever, whatever the case, they're like alignment. The Palestinians basically allied with the Nazis well, during that like time that too, and have never stopped being Nazis. That's my argument. Okay, so, hold on. So I don't church. think that that's. I don't think that that's enough of a fair com like uh, comparison. I think that we can we can can we agree that like let's say that you were living in an area. I look right. I look uh, at the TV. Let, okay. Let me just ask you this question. I I know, and the TV their gives TV, us a lot of their information. Their TV is Nazi TV, basically. Yes. I. <laughs> Well, it's like Hamas version of Nazi right. shit. It's, I understand. It's Arab yeah, Nazi. I'm, listen, That's what I say. I am, Arab I am a super. I have been super way more uh, pro you Israel bearing, than pro Palestine. I'm loving. I'm right. loving your. I'm being. Like, I'm ahead, being as ahead. as. Go ahead. Yeah, Let's get to it. I like it. Being I like as it. even handed yeah. as possible. I like it. I choose so. On the, um, I'm trying to get to you, Jacob. I want them to finish their point first. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. we're listening. To okay, so they got a super shit deal dealt to them, and for the first couple of wars, they probably had the moral right. But at this point, they probably don't. You've you, it's been 80 years. Israel's more powerful than you. You're not going to get anything. Um, yeah, you're not going to get anything out of fighting forever. Like it, this is stupid at this point. But I think that it's important for us to recognize what the the situation on the ground is i think that we should all feel at least some empathy for the people of gaza because holy fuck those people are getting bombed into oblivion i do is I it is it yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be meat shields. i feel bad so uh, no, right. most so, of them are not voluntary awful, awful not, nightmare they're not necessarily volunteered they're voluntold all right exactly. a lot of the time they're voluntold and yeah. that's right. really fucked up yeah you, 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 I, I got your point i'll come back to it with a question but i do want to give jacob a chance to talk so jacob yeah, please yeah. take your chance now to talk Okay, okay. All right, so let's start from all this beginning. Let's give it a quick history thing. We all know that before British Mandate, there came the Ottoman Empire. And then after the Ottoman Empire, there was the British Mandate of the Palestinian region. And after World War II, 1948, that's when it came to State of Israel. And the reason why it all started is because it all split into two. And this has been going happening every decade to decade. Palestine, Israel, Palestine, Israel, Israel. Here's the thing. I think it would be better off if the whole state of Israel becomes a one state and that the, that the That's region never happen. and the country. Be, and and here, I, I know, I know. I'll, let me get to my point. The state of Israel, I believe, should become like the state of Israel and Palestine, a whole region solution in which. Everyone there participates in Israeli parliament, the Palestinians and Israelis. Okay? We've well, already are, tried. Yeah, that might is, happen through now, you know, through war. It would never happen okay. politically, but now it might. Yeah. Well, hold on. That would, okay. the, the Israelis but would never off. be okay with that. Because they're they if they did a one state solution, the Israelis would now be the demographic um, minority and they would lose their ability to. Uh, they like the Palestinians would outnumber them like I think right. like three to one or something yeah, like there's that. No so they wouldn't two state either. Why would they pull in people that want them to die too? So that 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 facts, goes back facts. to the question that I had for Sansal then. And uh, but Alice, you said you had to leave soon. Is there anything you want to say or anything? Are you still channeling? What's going on? I, I'll I'll uh I'll answer. I want to hear your question. And I'll... Man, all right. So what is I the better way much of more war? Lively, bro. What uh, is the better I way of war in Israel? Point. For Sansol. So you're saying that there's there's two ways to do war, basically. Paraphrasing, you know, there's a crappy way to do war and there's a quick, efficient way or a good way to do war. What is the correct approach that should be happening in your point of view that will end what's happening now? Um, to be clear, when it comes to when it comes to this, I don't know what a better strategy for Israel is. I'm not one of those people that's gonna say like Oh well, they're like bombing indiscriminately. I don't think that they are bombing indiscriminately. I think that there's enough evidence that like they're not doing a genocide or anything like that. Yeah, I don't have, a, don't have a better so. Yeah, <laughs> like if they that. if yeah if they were doing a genocide, they're the worst genociders of all time because there's more Palestinians yeah. than there ever have been. Yeah. Uh, they've dropped. There's uh, like there'd be a whole base. I'm just trying to like think like what genocide involves people like, you know, having a positive population growth. What genocide involves, you know, people, um, you know, like there's twenty thousand bombs dropped as of a couple of weeks ago, and the death toll was significantly lower than what you would expect for twenty thousand bombs. Like it was like one point three yeah. deaths. 
per bomb. Right. Like if they Israel wanted to do a genocide, no they could. And just, killing innocent just people. To... The only people who benefit from that are Hamas and like their, you know, useful idiots. Yeah, to back so up Israel's Israel's Hamas Hamas point, if it's if it's putting their, their their bases on the strategic points where they can try to cause as much cataclysm as they can. Like they put them under hospitals or any place that is a high True. density of people. Hey, real quick, I probably am going to end the stream soon because we've been going for a while and we're way off topic anyway. But uh, Sonasol, I wanted you to <laughs> shout out your channel and everything if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Sonsol, S-O-N-D-S-O-L. I like to talk to people who disagree with me. I have a lot of fun with it. It doesn't have to be like a knockout, you know, blood sports, whatever. I just, I like to understand why people uh, believe the things that they do. And uh, sometimes I do get into blood sports stuff because people really irritate the fuck out of me. And but I'll fight actually, anyone on the left or the right. Yeah, he's actually uh, has all the smarts of like destiny, but like none of the like annoying weird stuff. So that's my opinion of him. Which um, annoying weird stuff do I avoid? <laughs> personal attacks. No, he, personal I, attacks. He just gets like. Well, I, I would get into. I would. I could play the video. Retards. Yeah, but like, you don't. <laughs> no, no. He, okay, he just gets weird. He gets weird. Like I, I've. I, I I could get into it. We could get into it. Like what you just posted on Twitter. Hold like on. what you, you just posted on Twitter. Yeah. Before you get into it, or, or any closing statements for the stream before that. Yeah, real. I, was, just, I want to give uh, Tyler a chance here. Go ahead, Tyler. I'm just. I, I was going to say I'm going to play Dota. It's been real. I'll see you next Thursday. All right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for, for chilling, out. dude. I know you weren't going to make it coming in, us. man. Good, good turnout. Yep. Yeah, Take man. Reason. Thanks and love your dogs. At Atlas, dude. Thanks for hanging out, man. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. And uh, I personally, I liked your. I've always liked your uh, your influence here and your uh, hanging out in the Discord and all that. So I hope you keep doing that. Well, I just brought people the wrong way. Uh, appreciate that's you okay. Me. I like one extra mile. I'll see you later. Yeah. Yep. Have a good day, man. But um, oh yeah, and the rest of you, Ford. Ford, do you have anything you want to say? No. And we can keep hanging out and talking, uh, but I know it, we've been going on yeah, for a while. Yeah, I'm going to have to get off here in a little bit. Uh, yeah, but, okay, but that's we cool. We can talk for a couple of minutes. No, no, so. no, you're good. You're good. I, I'm good, too. I'm about to get off here. So, uh, yeah. Right. Hey, well, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching. Fun, guys. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Have a blessed night. Stay safe. Can we keep Thank the strong you. energy? Say again? I think we actually had a good time with this, you know, even though we had a bit of hiccups, you know. Yeah, we're still uh, we're, we're still getting this thing we're still getting this thing together, but uh, yeah, we'll get there. Smooth, eventually. man. What was the problem? Of, uh, I, I need to invest more time, and it's hard for me. <laughs> I think it went fine. Someday, when my kids fun? get a little bit older, it'll be easier. Well, right hold on. Now. What what is the what is like the major holdback? What is the for me? What is it that you're? Yeah, what? It's well, it sucks because like, like I feel like it's well, it's like it's hurt my channel too, but. I'm just like I'm a stay-at-home dad. My wife works. I do YouTube full time, and it used to be it used to pay the bills. Not so much these days, but um, I'm with four kids. One one year old. She's about to turn one year old, and uh, they, they're all young. Young uh, ones in school. Another, uh, I'm sorry, two's in school. Uh, third's about to go in school. But it's it's really hard for me to like have time to do anything for this stuff because it's just. Always stuff going hey, on. That'll get you out there. And what I'm, do you think? You was know, it's my job to wash dishes and do laundry and all that stuff too. You know. Hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and hop out. All right, love you guys. Right. I'll catch you guys later. If you guys want <laughs> nice to talk, talk about any of these man. things, like yep, individually, well, I gotta give shoot me a message. Yeah, yeah, debate me, bro. Appreciate it, brother. Absolutely, right. debate me, bro. Thanks for coming, dude. <laughs> bro, I'm gonna you guys just for a second here. Hey, everybody. Just wanted to uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, we're going to keep doing this. I know it's really rough, and, you know, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I got some equipment here, some hardware that's supposed to help me, but I haven't really had time to uh, learn how to use it and do all that. It should make it easier at some point, but as I was just talking about, most of my life is dedicated to my kids and my family at, right now, and I still love this channel. Don't get me wrong. I'm this channel is my life and my job and I'm still into it, but geez, like I just don't have so much time for it anymore. It sucks. My whole day is spent doing kids stuff and house stuff. And then my wife gets home in the evening and then 
I come down here and I try to work and I also try to work during nap time, which we're talking like maybe an hour or two if I even get that. So, uh, yeah, everybody, I really appreciate you still watching this channel and coming to watch me and uh, the, the content I'm offering and I appreciate it. And I hope you keep coming back and I will see you all on the next one. Good night.